Good evening, welcome. This is the Marion City Council meeting for Thursday, June 7th. Please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Draper? Here. Ms. Hetzel? Present. Mr. Jensen? Here. Mayor Abouassili? Here. Ms. Gedalia? Here. Mr. Brandt? Here. Mr. Sternad? Present. This time we have a moment of silence. <clears throat> Thank you. First up on our agenda, we have uh, a presentation uh, regarding public input for the uh, pedestrian bridge design over Marion Boulevard. <coughs> Is that you, Kesha? Yes. Okay. Last calculation. Um, I'm like cutting it close. So. Hi. As you all walked <coughs> past, so Kesha Billings with the City uh, Planning Department. Um, hopefully every one of you took the chance to vote. You saw the boards out there at City Hall at the City Showcase. If you bike to work, they were at the pit stops there too. I'll just put this up quick. So <laughs> figured this would be seen by maybe more um, so what we have is we set out to search for some public input <coughs> on bridges for what our next gateway into Marion is um, hopefully you got a chance to look at the existing conditions or you drive under um, the bridge over Marion Boulevard today and as we've explained I've feel like we've tried to explain it as much as possible. The current bridge over Marion Boulevard, the old railroad bridge, was built in the 50s or 60s. It has three significant size columns in the right of way of 7th Avenue Marion Boulevard. One of the columns directly right in the center of the roadway, right now it's right in the center of a median, would have to be taken out um, because of the intersection of Albernet Road coming into the second, what's now the second street intersection, right at that curve. So when that goes in, you have a turn lane that needs to go in, requiring the elimination of that center pillar. I have had one citizen suggest that that center pillar be taken out and the bridge is substantial enough to be left as is. Um, FYI, we have not verified that with a structural engineer, it's just going off the premise all columns are needed and taking one out makes the bridge structurally deficient. And so we're still going with the idea of taking the whole bridge down. This is something new that was suggested today, but I'm just gonna clear that up. I'd, I'd still um, not that have Mike on the spot, but I mean, it's, um, I would go on the assumption that that column was needed, is still needed to make that structurally sufficient. So the idea is take the entire bridge down, supporting columns is what, um, put in a clear span bridge, pedestrian bridge. And so right now it's a 30 foot wide bridge. What we'd be looking at is 14 or 16 foot wide, pedestrian scale, cyclists, wheelchairs, walkers, rollerbladers, um, that type. Motorized vehicles prohibited. However, it would be significant enough to allow snow plows and stuff, our, our parks department plows on there. So. What we have is we have um, option A, hopefully all of you 
you can have really good eyesight or you can recall. Option A was that truss with the false arch. And so that's your standard truss bridge um, with, with that false arch is not really needed. Um, the view through it would be, actually I can pull up. example of that bridge um, from the boards. So this would be option A is your truss bridge <coughs> with a false arch. So your experience going through it is more of going through the square truss as you continue on through the bridge. Um, safety railing and whatnot included. We're not anticipating people wielding off the side. Um, option B is what we've referred to as the A-frame bridge. What this does is um, from the boards out there, your experience going through, it's kind of more like going through a, a triangle or an A-frame structure. This one would have um, the vertical elements coming together at the top and the spacing of those vertical elements changes. They get closer and further apart as you go through the bridge. And so the view from the traffic um, on the street, the view from the trail user changes, or the feeling of that bridge changes as you go through it or under it. Option C is what they call the skewed arch bridge. And so this one has pedestrian access or the accommodation down to 7th Avenue built into the structure. And so what this one anticipates is the sidewalk, you'd be on the sidewalk of Marion Boulevard, come over, and this staircase ramp, however it would be constructed, comes up to the center, and then the blue area is kind of the through, the through trail. And so if looking from it from a bird's eye view, it kind of has this cross hatch, and so that the arch is perpendicular to the road, and that because the trail and the road aren't necessarily on the same skew. So it's kind of creating that element. Um, so this one is the only one that has guaranteed access down to 7th Avenue built into the design. The other ones have stairs coming up. Um, see it better in this one. Stair element or a ramp element coming up from. And so pedestrian access down to Marion Boulevard 7th Avenue is built in or included with each one of these. Option C has it part of the bridge structure. And then option D is the Iowa Bridge, Iowa Big Bridge concept. And from the concepts out there and what they presented to the council last spring is not necessarily a, a solid tube over that. And so what, what got to be the hard part is integrating their design into kind of a, an existing conditions of the road. And so ideally this would be more of a lattice type structure with a um, coil lighting design or some sort of coil design through the structure. And so you would be able to see into the bridge. It's not going to be a solid tube um, built over. This one includes a lookout. This is the only one that actually has the lookout space integrated into part of the bridge. Um, so yeah. Um, so I'll get into voting. And so online, so Amber closed the voting this afternoon. So online we had 1,185 votes. Wow. So almost 1,200 votes online only. Um, on the board, as you can see, it looks pretty much like a bag of Skittles. Um, so, but that was done with purpose. And so if you look at the red dots, these are, this is the um, feedback that we got from the city showcase. So the residents, visitors um, coming to the city showcase that came that Saturday got to see, got to vote first on these bridge designs. And we opened up the online voting after that. So the Monday after we opened up online voting. So um, almost the entire month of May was open to online voting as well as putting your own dots on um, on actual poster board. The 
orange dot if you ever had to come up for a city building permit, had a zoning question, or needed a chicken permit. Um, you came <laughs> upstairs to the second floor. All of these designs were available for voting upstairs. The orange dots represent people that were like, oh, I hadn't heard about this, or yeah, I heard about it. I just wanted to come and see it in person. Um, the pink dots were Bike to Work Week. And so I set up a couple um, different stations on Bike to Work Week, what I call a morning pit stop. And so you have commuters to, I would say, majority of the commuters are Rockwell, so it, that would be a skew um, if you were looking for one, um, one workplace that was targeted. I hate to say we targeted, but the pit stop locations were more geared towards Rockwell. Um, so the pink are that. Um, the yellow dots are Sam Pio, so Brandon White has been here to speak a couple times, um, I believe, and so he had an open house with the MPO, and so the yellow dots are from that, and then the green dots, there's seven of them in there, um, was voting just in the last hour. That's people who hadn't voted before, fresh dots on there. And so um, I don't have the exact whatever 1508 minus 1185 is. Um, so total with dots online, 1,508 people voted for these. Not to say that they're not duplicates. That I'm just want to put that out there. This, these are not statistically significant numbers, um, just because there there is that that option for double voting, triple voting, depending on how many times you actually come to city events. <laughs> um, you can get that in there, but. Um, total of 1,508 votes for that. So, drum roll. The big reveal is that option A had 555 votes, which is 36%. Um, option B, so option A is the truss with the false arch. Option B is the A-frame. Um, that had 255, which is 16%. Um, option C, which is the skewed arch, that's the one with the pedestrian arch down to 7th Avenue. That one had 291 votes, which is 19%. And then the last one, option D, the Iowa Big um, student driven project was 407, which is 26%. And so um, option B, the arch, I think, um, well, it was in option B, in person voting, it was the highest. It had 98 votes. So B or A? B. So in person, on this board, <coughs> option B is the is the favorite. Oh. Online voting had a significant more um, number more people voting. Option A was the clear favorite, and that continued through um, to get the majority of the votes. So any questions? Any questions about process, numbers? bridge designs themselves. I just have a quick one um, because you mentioned the access that C gives right from the road um, as part of the bridge. I didn't realize any of them had access uh, from from 7th. Um, so they're ADA compliant, all four? Ideally, yes. Oh, okay. Um, but the, cost, the, the cost estimates are um, preliminary, very preliminary. Um, not necessarily putting exact numbers to it. And so um, if if something had to be taken out and it depended on the bridge getting constructed or not and the pedestrian access down to 7th Avenue would, would save it and would keep it within budget, that would be something that we'd either take out or bring back to City Council and say, here is an option. Do we put it in at a later date? Do we put it in at a, at a, in a later budget year? But ideally, yes. Every one of these would have that access down to seventh. Cool. Now, all of this voting was done without regard to any cost estimates. Correct. For these four, it's looking at design yes. concept. Because what we're looking only. at is, we're, yes, we're looking at a concept. We do have cost estimates mm -hmm. on every one of the designs. We have a high and a low cost estimate for oh. every one of the designs. I didn't know that. And so there are cost estimates. Some, are, some of these bridges are estimated to be higher. Some of them are estimated to be lower. Um, then the, then the 1.5 that we have budgeted for this bridge. So when we did the grant for the two bridges, 
we estimated each one of them at 1.5. And so that's kind of our ballpark of what we're looking at for this bridge alone is 1.5. Okay. So I can give estimates if that, if that is what you want. Um, we can also you know, go on concept only and say, look, people within 1.5, you know, are there, you know, keep the significant structural elements the same. Is there cost savings that could be um, done to, you know, is it that exact looking bridge? Probably not in, in the grand scheme of things. I guess let's, let's just uh, clarify what, what, what is the next, uh, what are you looking for from us at this yes. point? I mean, so what are we doing is, here? Tonight it is just presentation just and results presenting. of okay. voting. And okay. that is in two weeks we'd actually have council direction on design. On which design to proceed mm -hmm. with. And these are our only four options. Yes. Okay. And will we be receiving those cost estimates in addition to this tally? Sure. Okay. Or if you, or are you, there? you good? Do we want them now? Do we want? Could you just put a picture of the one that had the most votes? The most votes. That was option A. Is your is your right? It's your mm -hmm. traditional, um, mm -hmm. more familiar as a trail bridge. Um, so gateway into Marion, you know, obviously you're like, oh, they got a trail up there. You know, not only seeing people on it, but um, you know, I think that that's a pretty clear design, um, consistent design, I would say, for trail elements. Yeah, I think the the, the the fact of it being a gateway feature mm -hmm. is just as important as the experience of someone going through it, going on on the bridge. Um, and we had another arch in the, in, the, in the initial design walkthrough of these. There was another arch design, but that was double the budget. Um, and so what we had is we had it taken back, okay, keep the arch design in there, but make something or have something that is at an achievable mm -hmm. estimate. What's and that so material? Are they both the red <coughs> and the chrome? Are they both metal? Um, and I tried to tell people not to get hung up on like colors and materials. I, I'm not quite sure what, okay. I'm, Unfortunately, not a structural engineer, so I couldn't tell you what the best and the latest and greatest materials are for rail bridge construction. Besides the one, the Iowa Big Design, who designed the other three? Substance Architecture with out of Des Moines. So when we hired Shoemaker Holland um, to do the design of the CMAR trail, their sub-consultant, what we wanted is we wanted the <coughs> engineering design firm to have a bridge architect firm as part of their cost estimate when we hired them. And so their subconsultant was substance architecture. And so A, B, and C were out of that office. Okay. Yeah, I personally would like to honor what was, what won the majority vote. And in fairness, I voted for A, so I'm, I happen to like it, but the, the cost estimate will likely drive vote like I would like to stay in the budget that was you know 1.5 it has to be a factor yeah oh yeah. of course yeah. it's the factor but mm. and there are you know and there are a number of um, place making trail grants additional you know state we could match our local funds with the federal funds with state funds we, we haven't even tapped into state funds yet um, local foundations that do significant donations that could be a request of them as well for a significant um, okay. piece, a significant gateway in our area. Yeah, it's a great idea. Other comments, questions? I think it's I think it's great. I, I personally like the A as well too. I, from my other perspective, I like the fact that it's more visible for police and safety um, to be able to see who's up there, what activities are going on. Um, it's more transparent so you can see through there. Some of the other ones give you a little bit more of an obstruction. So, you know, we have, yeah. if there's any potential issues, you know, in a nighttime or 
I, you know, I hate to say this, but there's just been more accidents with objects being thrown from bridges and stuff like that. I mean, these are all playing into those things that I look at as well, too. So but they were all great, and um, this happens to be my favorite as well. But thank you for all your work. That's okay. a lot of work. Okay, and if you have any questions in the next couple weeks, if you think of one more thing, I'll be happy to take emails, calls, stop in. Um, if not, we'll have this on the next city council agenda for a decision. Okay. And I'll probably be back in front of you at that time, too. Cool? Thanks. Thanks. Okay, next we have a presentation from Heart Safe Lynn County, Iowa. Are you Rose? I am. Welcome. Welcome. I think that we have a PowerPoint, so I would assume that it's here. I could pull it up. Beth, do we need name and address? Beth? Yes. Uh, my name is Rose Thanks. Hedges, and I actually live in Mount Vernon, so 303 3rd Street Southwest in Mount Vernon, Iowa. Welcome. Thank you. Well, as this is loading, by way of an introduction, I'm a nurse by training. I work in informatics, and my um, nurse training is actually in cardiac intensive care. It's kind of how I got um, involved in this program. If someone would just share Here with me, go. perfect. <laughs> I'm like, how do I make it work? Perfect. Um, I got involved with this as I um, helped to lead Unity Point St. Luke's um, community CPR team. And so we... Um, as a Heart Safe Lynn County, were designated. Actually, um, last fall, we got this designation, and I want, I'd like to tell you more about that as well and kind of what we are asking of you and how you can help. So this is our certificate. Lynn County as a whole, um, we were designated as a five heart instead of star program. And um, this is actually good through 2020. And we, um, what this means is that we have met qualifications as a county, that we have all of these really great things for heart health and kind of keeping us all um, safe, if you will. So we have frequent and readily available, available CPR AED training. Great. There's a lot of that throughout our community. You can go just about anywhere to get that. Um, we encourage public access defibrillators and AED placements. So we know that throughout our community as a whole of Bend County, we have AEDs strategically placed. Um, a lot of com um, community Organizations have them, private public areas have these that we can use. Um, advanced cardiac life support focus with all of our ambulance services, updated um, AED location and maintenance technology, which I'll get to in a moment, and then the mobile um, technology focus, which makes us a little bit unique in our area to kind of get that five star. Before I get more um, in depth, I'd like to just share what our mission statement is and who makes up our coalition today. Today our coalition is made up of um, Unity Point, Mercy Medical Center, American Heart Association's Iowa chapter, as well as Think Safe, which is the um, team who has created the app that we use to locate where our AEDs are. So our mission statement is we really um, just want to regionally help more people survive sudden cardiac arrest by having a community heart safe program that promotes early CPR and early defibrillation through this public access of AEDs. And we know from the American Heart Association that 383,000 people nationwide have an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, so not in the hospital. And 32% of those people get the help they need before emergency professionals arrive. So part of our goal is to raise awareness that of hands-only CPR as well as to look, know where our AEDs are in our community because we know that fast action can save lives. So what is our ask? Um, really celebrate our designation. This is not something that every community has. This is great. That means Lynn County is really doing a really good job of keeping our public uh, safe. So we have a uh, website that anybody can go to to learn more about heart safe, what, a, what are some heart things you can learn about, AEDs, and then also we have the app that we support as well that's um, pictured there in the corner that we can share these with the minutes. We want to spread the word about this app. It's a free app, and what it does is it tells you in your community the closest AEDs to you. 
So if you are you know, out walking your dog or something happens, you can actually use the app and say, oh, you know what, Casey's has an AED. I could potentially save a life. So that's what the purpose of this app is, and that's what makes us a little bit unique as, as well in our community is having access to this. So our ask from you all is we are always looking for more people to help us volunteer on this task force, and that may be um, hanging out at a booth and teaching people hands-only CPR or just being passionate about heart health. Um, we have a Facebook page. We're really just trying to get the awareness out there that we have this really awesome designation and we should be proud of ourselves. So we're making the, the rotation, if you will, of city councils to let everybody know. I'm happy to entertain any questions. Any questions? Huh? Oh, sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> we should be proud of it, yeah. You got that app on your phone for yeah, the, the, yeah. I can help you. Your wife. The designation, who who determines that? Who grants that designation? I mean, it's actually a HeartSafe is a foundation. So they, um, it's a nationally known foundation, and they okay. do that designation. Okay. And your local organization here has earned that designation? Correct. Okay. And that's generally Lynn County, you said? Or is it yes, just Lynn County, County is what the designation is for. Okay. Other questions or? No, that's awesome. Comments? Thank you. Great. Thanks for your time. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Moving on to the consent calendar. Your Honor, I make a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented. It should be items one through 20 which include um, resolutions number 26888 through 26918. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent calendar as presented items 1 through 20, which includes resolutions 26888 through 26918. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion passes. I'll pass the gavel to Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Make the motion to approve consent calendar with Mayor Abelocity's abstention from voting and discussion regarding the, cons the following items as presented. This will be resolution number 26919 through resolution number 26925. We have a motion by Randy and a second by Will. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And one abstention. Yes. Okay, pass the gavel back. Okay, this time we have a public hearing on a, proposed, a proposal to enter into general obligation urban renewal loan agreement regarding Prospect Meadows. Um, Lon, do you have a short synopsis of what we're doing here. Yeah, this is actually a, a new concept for the City of Marion. Uh, in essence, what we're doing is a general obligation urban renewal loan agreement to provide a loan guarantee on behalf of Prospect Meadows. As part of the financing for their overall project, they are doing uh, some financing through Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust. And uh, as part of the conditions of granting the loan, the bank, of course, was looking for all the security they could find. So they asked if Lynn County and the City of Marion would be willing to provide a partial guarantee for that loan. So uh, we have uh, put one together. Lynn County has already approved theirs, and our loan guarantee would be for a uh, maximum of $1.2 million, but it's an annual obligation guarantee, meaning that it's broken up into annual payments. So the only exposure that the city has is whatever the city council is willing to obligate and approve as part of the annual budget process. Okay. The public hearing is now open. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this measure? Anyone here to speak in opposition of this measure? OK, 
Okay, seeing that there's none, we'll close the public hearing. Yes, Your Honor, I have resolution number 26,926, approving a general obligation urban renewal loan agreement providing for provisional levy of taxes to pay for the same and approving the site agreement with Prospect Meadows, Inc. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 26926, approving the general <coughs> obligation urban renewal loan agreement, providing for the provisional levy of taxes to pay the same, uh, and approving a side agreement with Prospect Meadows, Inc. Discussion? So long did the, the side agreement is, is that the agreement you meant? That's, that's yeah, the, yeah. Uh, what I wanted to do was provide just a little bit of a briefing on that um, and maybe a little bit of explanation on yeah. why it was not included as part of my briefing on the, the uh, public hearing. The public hearing, the general obligation loan agreement, and a hearing is required before the city uh, executes, a, executes a debt instrument. The economic development loan agreement that's referred into the resolution as a side agreement is a, a separate agreement with Prospect Meadows that says that in the event that the, the uh, guarantee gets exercised, say in year five something happens, the economy goes in the tank and we have to, and the city has to kick in some money to help cover their payment obligation. At such time as their um, loan with Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust is paid off, they are agreeing to pay us back for that guarantee. So we're providing coverage to them for the period of the loan, but in the event that the guarantee is exercised, this loan agreement says that they will reimburse us after the Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust is paid off because the money then that was going towards that debt service annually would be no longer needed to pay the bank and could go to reimburse us. It was something that uh, I know some of the council members wondered about what additional things could we do to provide security on our agreement. And so we had a discussion with our bonding attorney and they said this would be something we could do to provide some additional guarantee beyond just hotel motel revenues and beyond the general obligation bonds uh, capacity that's part of the public hearing. Um, Prospect Meadows uh, has seen it. Their executive committee actually gave Jack uh, authorization to sign it. He signed it and left a signed copy tonight, but I know the council did not receive that uh, until uh, later in the day. So uh, my suggestion would be if, you're, if you want more time to renew that, to approve the guarantee subject to the approval of the economic development loan agreement. And then you could, we could maybe have that come back and look at that separately. I have a quick question, Lon. Yeah. If there is, um, if the guarantee is exercised, um, would there be then a line of debtors that we would be in line with then after the lending institution or would we f default to next in line on recoveries? The, uh, the way the loan agreement is put together, it doesn't really get into the security agreements. It just says that um, they will pay us back after Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust is out of the way. The way their financing is structured, USDA is providing the bulk of the long-term financing for the project. They're going to be essentially in first position on everything uh, that they can get their hands on. And then Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust will be in a position behind them. So with Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust, if that when they are out of the way, then we would default into their position. Um, USDA is generally long-term financing. They have limited opportunities to refinance that or take that out. Um, so there's not like you might have in a conventional mortgage where you can all of a sudden go back in and resubordinate and everything. It also does uh, provide in the agreement that anything that would, if they tried to assign it or something like that, none of that can be done without our prior approval. Thank you. I have a question, Lon. Does our obligation, our 50% obligation, diminish as years go by? Is it more the first year, less, 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 and less? It uh, would be based on whatever is due in that particular year on the amortization schedule from the bank. So in the event, for example, that Prospect Meadows were to have extra money and pay forward, then it could potentially go down as their balance goes down and payments were paid off. Um, but they'd also then just have the option to maybe pay the loan off in nine years instead of ten and continue with the straight line amortization. But I, I guess I'm having a difficult time in that. If our obligation this year is here and they fulfill this year, 
it would seem to me like our obligation would be less the next year because that year's gone and they paid that. Yeah. Um, Doesn't work that way? It'll depend on how they set up the final amortization schedule on the loan. And um, the way we've got it structured right now, we basically set up our guarantee and Lynn County's guarantee figuring a straight line amortization and half of that as a maximum in any given year. So we always have the option for it to be lower. We just obligated ourselves to a maximum in any calendar year. Is this, is this a tenure? Is this a ten-year term loan? It's eleven and a half, but 11 it's eleven and a half. half because it's eighteen months construction. Then it converts over to permanent, and it's ten years from permanent from there. Okay. And we do not have an obligation during that first eighteen months. We we loan though could approve the general obligation urban renewal agreement without approving the at this point the site agreement. We could take that out of this motion yeah, until if you we had an opportunity to study it. Yeah, if you wanted more time to review that, I know you received that late, so that's why so I said. So someone could amend amend the motion. Your Honor, I would like to make that amended to amend this motion, re <coughs> taking out the approving, approving of site agreement with Prospect Meadows, Inc., the last sentence in the motion. Second that. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded to amend. Maybe I should say amend and table, but I don't know. Yeah. Amend um, the motion to approve resolution number 26926 um, to remove the approval of the additional agreement. I don't like the word side agreement, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, actually, okay. that was just what was in the resolution. It's actually I've called an economic development so loan think, agreement yeah. on the document. Your Honor, so it could be I should move to table it, that portion of this. And, and table it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe just that portion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Any discussion on amending the motion? Yes. Wouldn't we want to, we don't want to approve the motion or approve the loan agreement without approving the side agreement at the same time wouldn't wouldn't that we wouldn't so we would want to amend it saying that we approve it based on us approving the side agreement in the future correct so we don't want to approve it and then we're we don't want to approve the loan agreement without approving the side agreement also i think that right makes, to me that makes sense yeah. I think that's what you said which is what right Lon there. initially suggested yes. that it be the approval subject to the um, yeah, economic the development agreement being being approved at a later date. Is there some urgency in approving this Lon? Um, with the everything else is already lined up and Myron is uh, actively working out there and knew that we were going to be having the public hearing and we just don't want to make them skittish uh, their timeline is pretty tight to be open in spring of next year and if you start to get in the point where you do miss tournament dates or something like that does it does start to have a pretty negative impact on the project's cash flow Okay, so I don't see it as an issue, though, Mayor, to approving <coughs> the general obligation loan agreement conditional on approval of the economic development loan agreement. Okay. So at this point, we have Paul's motion on the floor. Um, Does that say the same thing? No. Amend mm -mm. and table, yeah. Well, we could, we could vote on that and... Wrote it down and then come back with another amendment. To uh, he could also withdraw it. You want okay, <laughs> Paul? Sure. <laughs> Why you, not? You're withdrawing your motion. Oh. Uh, yeah, we'll withdraw it and correct it okay. as it should be. And then okay. Steve would need to withdraw his second on that motion also. I'll draw the second. Thank you. Okay. All right. So the motion to amend has been withdrawn. So is it? Did you want to? Make another motion to amend. Okay. Um, let me think of how we'll word this. Um, I make a motion to amend. Hold on. Let me see where we're at. <laughs> make a motion to amend resolution number 26926 um, to approve the general obligation urban renewal loan 
agreement um, contingent upon the approval of the economic development loan agreement. That sound right? Yes. <laughs> Second. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 26926, uh, which is approving the general obligation of a renewal loan agreement, but contingent on approval of the economic development loan agreement at a later date. Okay? Any discussion on that? On, on amending the motion? All those in favor of amending the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, so now it's an amended motion, which reads approving the general obligation urban renewal loan agreement contingent on uh, approving economic development loan agreement at a later date. Discussion on the amended motion. Okay. All right. All those in favor of the amended motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And turning the gavel over to Mayor Pro Tem for the next one. Okay, at this time I'd like to open up a public hearing regarding the issuance of an Urban, urban Renewal Annual Appropriation Tax Increment Revenue Bond Series 2018 and a principal amount not to exceed four and a half million GLD hotel development project. Um, Ron, would you? Sure, as part of the uh, redevelopment of the east end of the central corridor, in essence, what is the area between 27th and 31st streets, uh, the city considered an economic development package centered around two, two major pieces. One was the hotel, and then the other was the commercial development around the hotel. And as part of the hotel development, uh, what the city agreed to do was to provide an economic development grant uh, equal to 36% of the ex estimated hard construction costs of the structure. And we're doing that by doing an economic development uh, urban renewal loan through a local financial institution. So the Collins Road Extension Urban Renewal Area, that TIF district, is going to be repaying this loan. Um, and then as the project draws down and as it proceeds, we will pay 36% of costs based off of invoices that are supplied to us um, through the course of the construction project up to a maximum of $4.5 million. Okay. Thank you. If there's anyone from the public who would like to come up and speak in favor of this um, bond issuance, please do so at this time. Okay, would anyone like to come up and speak against this bond issuance? Please come up and speak at this time. Okay, seeing none, public hearing is closed. Kim? Yes, Your Honor. I make a motion to approve resolution number 26927, authorizing the issuance of a 4.5 or 4,500,000 4, um, urban renewal annual appropriation tax increment revenue bond series 2018, pledging to the payment thereof funds and portions of taxes subject to non appropriation created pers pursuant to the authority of. Subsection 2 of Section 403.19 of the Code of Iowa GLD Hotel Development Project. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Kim and a second by, was that you, Paul? Yes. Thank you. And a second by Paul. Discussion? Okay, seeing none, um, we need a roll call vote, is that correct? We can do one. Yeah. I mean, well, it's a public hearing. I thought we had. You are not required. Oh, to. okay, then not necessary. All those in uh, favor of resolution two six nine two seven, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? And one abstention. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number two six nine two eight, approving twenty eight e agreements with Linmar School District and the Marion Independent School District for school resource 
Officers. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 26928, approving 2080E agreements with the Linmar School District and Marion Independent School District for school resource officers. Discussion. Um, I know this, this agreement was forwarded this morning by, by the police department. Um, do you want to talk about it? This uh, is basically an agreement between uh, the city of Marion Linmar School District and the Marion Independent School District for the school districts to uh, split the cost um, of a zero to one year police officer, thereby allowing the police department um, to place a, uh, a school resource officer um, at both the Marion Independent School District and the Linmar School District. So. What it effectively does is it splits the cost of a police officer between the districts, but allows each district to have their own officer. I mean, these are these are on these have been ongoing programs. I mean, um, historically, the city of Marion has only had one SRO um, to cover both school districts, but okay. uh, it, with the growth in the school districts and the capacity and uh, um, our desire to. Um, police them a little bit more vigorously. Um, we worked with the school districts over the last year to uh, um, get that second officer there at minimal okay. cost. Thank you. Other discussion? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that this is happening. Um, I used to teach in a high school and we had um, a school resource officer and, you know, when you're being proactive, sometimes you can't see all of the dividends that um, you benefit by having someone in that position who's establishing those relationships. But with what's happened in Parkland and other places recently and really in the last 15 years, um, it's great to see us beefing up this presence. I would hope that um, Linmar being considerably larger would consider adding to um, their school resource officer program so that it's not one officer between all of the schools, maybe something they could work into the strategic plan or something, but um, I'm happy that we're, we at least have um, one officer for each district. I think it's a great idea. I think Officer Dobbs has done a fantastic job over the years. Mm -hmm. I'm sad to see him leave Marion since that's where I have a, a child at, but uh, hopefully it's an Officer Davis, I believe. Yep. Yep. Uh, hopefully Brian uh, Davis was selected by the uh, school and, uh, board to be that second officer. Yeah, He's I'm very sure excited. Do. And uh, Tommy Dobbs just was inducted into, I believe it's kind of like the Linmar Hall of Fame for uh, who gets picture up on the wall up there. So it was a proud moment for him and he deserved uh, the opportunity to stay at Linmar. Other comments? Are you, are you okay, okay voting on this? Would you check with Shalee? I did not get that email today. Have her check her subfolder for council and just make sure it's updated. Absolutely. I didn't receive it, but I did read it um, on Councilman um, Brandt's deal here. So just a detail. Thank okay. you. And you're, I'm good. you're yep. comfortable. Okay. Did other, the rest of the council, discussion? did the rest of the council get the email? Yes. Okay. We'll make sure we get that fixed, okay. Randy. Thank you. Yeah. Other discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor of resolution number 26928, <coughs> please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. At this time, we have another public hearing regarding adoption by reference of the International Fire Code 2018 edition with amendments and providing penalties. <coughs> um, the public hearing is open. We, we, we got a rundown of all the amendments on at the Tuesday work session. Um, I don't know if anybody has, well, I guess this is the public hearing portion. Um, is there anything to Anybody to make a presentation on this or? No, Your Honor. Um, every three years, the International Code Council updates all their codes, including building, mechanical, electrical, um, all of those. And last month, the council did vote to update the building codes and all the mechanical code codes to the 2018 issues. And that's what the fire department is asking for also. All right. Anyone here to speak in favor of this measure? Okay, anyone here to speak in opposition? Please come forward. Okay, the public hearing is closed. Mr. Dela. 
Your Honor, I um, would like to move ordinance number 18-18, adopting by reference the International Fire Code 2018 edition with amendments and providing penalties. Uh, this is the initial consideration. Second. It's been moved and seconded mm -hmm. to approve ordinance number 18-18, adopting by reference the International Fire Code 2018 edition with amendments and providing penalties. Any discussion? Yeah, Chief, I thought we were going to have the wording of this tonight, accepting or, or excluding at this point in time the, I don't remember which section it was about the business permits. Yes, we just. So this is all inclusive? With the amendments, we just removed it from the amendments and we'll follow up on that at a later date. Okay, so as it's worded here, that is not included. That in is the not included, no. All right. Okay. Other discussion? Good. Good, good question. This is off the fire thing. Other discussion? I, yeah, I just want to say, um, so Fire Marshal did a great job with the presentation, and one thing that I noticed was, um, so we go and we do inspections, and then if there's an infraction, we come back, and it's still free at that point, and we sometimes have to come back and come back. And I would just ask to consider, um, I don't know if, increasing the penalty or something so that the fire department who is already um, short staffed to do some of this stuff I don't know if it just would incent people to get it right the first time it's pointed out or something but to save department time um, that we would consider making some of the penalties a little stiffer and I don't know if we're just in keeping with other people and this is me being a hard you know what but I just want to say it because I feel like we really are nice about <coughs> how much we go back and I love that we're working with people I get it but um, you know we're, we're really busy and we're saving lives at the same time too and so um, hopefully when we point something out the first time people would really try to get it right before we come back so just food for thought yes ma'am other other comments or questions <coughs> okay all those in favor of ordinance number 18-18 please say aye aye, aye. All those opposed, please say <coughs> no. The motion is approved. Uh, Chief, before we move on to the rest of the agenda, I got a question for you. Um, I have on my calendar still uh, for Saturday morning the fire demonstration about that new uh, equipment. Is that still this Saturday? Yes, sir, it is. It and is what Saturday. time is the actual I demonstration can, going to be? I can send out an email tonight and make sure you all receive it. Okay. With the address. And I know there's an educational part, and then there's also... There's a classroom portion in the morning from 8 to 11 at Christ Community Church. Okay. And then in the afternoon from 12 to 3, 2969 C Avenue Extension, we'll be burning down a two-story farmhouse and six vehicles to show an ultra-high-pressure firefighting system, which uses less water than our conventional engines do. Will you send out that reminder? I have it. I will. I had it for 8.30. I'll move it out to noon. That's okay. The, that's the piece I want to see. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. On to building Me? inspection. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I make a motion to approve ordinance number 18-11, amending chapter 160 of the Code of Ordinances and adopting by reference the International Building Code 2018 edition with amendments and provi providing penalties. Second consideration. Second. We moved and seconded to approve the ordinance number 18-11, amending chapter 160 of the Code of Ordinances, adopting by reference the International Building Code uh, 2018 edition with amendments and providing penalties. This is a second consideration. Any discussion on this? None. All those in favor of ordinance number 18-11, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Your Honor, I would move we suspend the rules and go to the third consideration on 1811. Is there, does it need a second? Second. Uh, second. Councilman Brandt. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules and to approve the final consideration of ordinance number 18-11. Any discussion? All those in favor of the final consideration or of 
Ordinance number 18-11, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion is approved. Mr. Your Honor, I make a motion uh, to approve ordinance number 18-12, amending chapter 163 of Code of Ordinances and adopting by reference the International Mechanical Code 2018 edition with amendments and providing penalties. Second consideration. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 18-12, amending chapter 163 of the Code of Ordinances and adopting by reference the International Mechanical Code 2018 edition with amendments and providing penalties. Second consideration. Discussion. All those in favor of ordinance number 18-12, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Your Honor. The motion is approved. Go ahead. I would move that we suspend the rules and go to the third consideration on 18-12. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules and approve the final consideration of ordinance number 18-13. Any discussion? 12. 18-12, I'm sorry. <coughs> Any discussion? All those, all those in favor of the final consideration of ordinance number 18-12, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Your Honor, I have <coughs> ordinance 18-13, amending the Code of Ordinance 161 of the Code of Ordinances and adopting by reference the International Plumbing Code 2018 additions with amendments and providing penalties. This is second consideration. Second. It is removed and seconded to approve ordinance number 18-13 amending chapter 161 of the Code of Ordinances and adopting by reference the International Plumbing Code 2018 edition with amendments and providing penalties. Second consideration. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving ordinance number 18-13, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Your Honor, I move to uh, suspend the rules and place ordinance number 18-13 for final consideration. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules and vote on the final consideration of ordinance number 18-13. Any discussion? All those in favor of the final consideration of ordinance number 18-13, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Your Honor, I make a motion to approve ordinance number 18-14, amending chapter 153 of the Code of Ordinances and adopting by reference the International Property Maintenance Code 2018 edition with amendments and providing penalties, second consideration. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 18-14, amending chapter 153 of the Code of Ordinances and adopting by reference the International Property Maintenance Code 2018 edition with amendments and providing penalties, second consideration. Discussion? Yeah, I'm gonna echo what I said about the um, International Fire Code because there are penalties for the last four and I'm not sure what those are and how much leeway we provide in terms of going back to do inspections. But I would just ask that uh, building inspection look at that and if we're giving a lot of leeway and having to go back third and fourth times continually that we maybe make stiffer penalties. Just to be consistent, save staff time. Okay. Other discussion? All those in favor of ordinance number 18-14 Please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Your Honor. I would move that we suspend the rules and go to the third reading on 1814. Second. Oh. It has been moved. It has been moved and seconded to. Yes. You said 1814. 14. Uh, yeah, that's yes. Right. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to suspend the rules and the final consideration of ordinance number 18-14. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the final approval of ordinance number 18-14, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. I'd like to make a motion to approve ordinance number 18-15, amending 
Chapter 50 of the Code of Ordinances Relating to Nuisance Abatement Procedure, Second Consideration. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve Ordinance Number 18-15, amending Chapter 50 of the Code of Ordinances Relating to Nuisance Abatement Procedure, Second Consideration. Discussion? All those in favor of Ordinance Number 18-15, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion is approved. Your Honor. Yes, sir. I make a motion to suspend the rules and place 18, ordinance number 1815 for final consideration. Second. It has been moved and seconded to suspend the rules and move to the final consideration uh, approval of ordinance number 18-15. Any discussion? All those in favor of the final approval of ordinance Number 18-16, please say aye. Or 15. 15, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Your Honor, I move that we approve ordinance number 18-16, amending chapter 165 of the Code of Ordinances relating to the Housing Code. This is the second consideration. Second. It has been, mo been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 18-16, amending chapter 165 of the Code of Ordinances relating to the Housing Code. Second consideration. Discussion? All those in favor of ordinance number 18-16, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion is approved. Your Honor? Yes, sir. I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules and move ordinance number 18-16 for final consideration. Second. Second. It was moved by Councilman uh, Sternad. 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 <laughs> and seconded by Councilman Brandt to uh, suspend the rules and move to the final consideration of ordinance number 18-16. Discussion. All those in favor of the final con approval of ordinance number 18-16, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. <coughs> All right, the motion is approved. That's how you have fun on the city council. Meeting, <laughs> right? That was a... That's our fun. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Mr. Brandt. Oh, is it me? Jeez. <laughs> um, Your Honor, I make a motion to approve resolution number 26929, approving a stop sign stopping wait approving a stop sign stopping north and south bound traffic on Winslow Road at its intersection with Tower Terrace Road second okay it's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 26929 approving uh, the addition of a stop sign stopping north and south bound traffic on Winslow Road at its intersection with Tower Terrace Road any discussion that permanent? Eventually, you're going to be able to. Yeah. I mean, tar tar is not open right there. Correct. Would you like me to give a, a staff report? Um, For sure. The benefit of the public. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, basically, what we're talking about this is the old Winslow Road here. This is the new Winslow Road. Right now, this intersection is what is closed to traffic right now. This is the intersection of Tower Terrace and Old Winslow Road. This is what Resolution 26929 is approving, is putting the stop signs in for north and southbound traffic. Eventually, the portion of Winslow Road north of Tower Terrace to the new Winslow Road will go away along with that bridge. The connection to the south will remain. So the, the stop signs will remain until the bridge gets built of Tower Terrace across Indian Creek. That was the answer to that short question, Mr. Draper. Um, the next two stop signs is removing the stop sign at Brookside and Indian Creek Road, which is this location here, and removing the stop sign at Indian Creek Road and 35th Avenue. What's going to happen is as soon as this intersection opens back up the traffic, which is going to be in approximately two weeks, then the contractor is going to start building this portion of Tower Terrace that will connect it all the way to the Cornhenge. So we've actually built it to this portion already. So we're just building this section here. In order to build that section, we will be shutting Indian Creek Road down. So from 
this location here all the way up to Lucor Road, Indian Creek Road, will be closed. As part of the development, Brookside Drive will tie into gemstone development that's going in here that you guys have seen several preliminary plots for. So this is kind of showing a big overall exhibit of what's going on. To the south, 35th Avenue is actually going to curve and tie into the existing subdivision that's in there, and there'll be another substreet to the west where houses will be built around this. So you can kind of see the big picture of what all is going to happen in this area. Basically, this all started back in December of 2009. The Neighborhood Indian Creek Design Guideline Manual was adopted by Resolution 20877. Um, this set the proposed access control and street network for the area along Tower Terrace Road from Lemon Lane to just west of 44th Street. Then in March of 2010, we had the Tower Terrace Road Corridor Management Plan that was adopted by the Corridor MPO that Snyder and Associates did. So the MPO is the Metropolitan Planning Organization. Then in June in 2010, we had the approval of the villas on 35th preliminary plat by resolution number 21112 that confirmed that the old 35th Avenue, which is a gravel road, would change to a local street and the new Tower Terrace Road alignment would go to the northeast after crossing Indian Creek Road. In 2010-2011, as part of the stimulus project, we actually built 35th Street um, and that's where we built the roundabout that Cornhenge is now in. The Cornhenge was built as a separate project afterwards. And then December of, of 2010, Tower Terrace Road, um, North 10th Street to North 35th Street roundabout design concept report adopted by resolution 21466, was, which was done by Ament Engineering. Um, for this, we actually have a flyover that I'll show you here in a minute. Um, that's the old map from 2010. Then in December of 2012, we had a memorandum of agreement with Morris Wood Enterprises on resolution number 22934 to construct Tower Terrace Road from Linden Lane to 35th Street Roundabout. Um, in the summer and fall of 2013, and then they had the seating in the spring of 2014. This is the, the flyby. It was done in um, 2010, so it's some old graphics and an old image. But you can see here we're starting clear over at 380 where Tower Terrace will start and we're going eastbound. We're clear over in Hiawatha at the, right now. <clears throat> now we're entering the, the city of Robbins. There's Robbins Road. Council Street. Now we're getting to C Avenue, where there's actually going to be a proposed roundabout by the um, city of Cedar Rapids. Um, this is a section of Lynn County that's in the annexation agreement. It's owned by Tom's house that wasn't built at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Albernet Road in Tower Terrace, which is also a roundabout. This will be the intersection of 10th Street and Tower Terrace between the, the school. There's the new Winslow Road that we've built. Now if I pause this for a second, you can actually see back in the day, right here is Indian Creek Road. They're showing it as green because back in 2010, it was proposed to go away. That Indian Creek Road would come up and tie into this cul-de-sac here and that Brookside would come here, tie into the existing development as it's being proposed today. So we're still following the original design concept that we did back then. Now we're approaching 35th Street and Lucor Road, which is where Cornhedge is, and then continuing to Highway 13. I won't show you the, the whole movie. There's a little bit more that goes. Um, then in April 2014, we have the approval of Edgebrook Estates revised preliminary plat by resolution 23758. This is the uh, approved connection of Edgebrook Drive west of Linden Lane, removing 35th Avenue west of Linden Lane. In November of 2014, we approved 
um, Gemstone Estates additional preliminary plat by resolution number 24181. This specifically calls out for the east half of Indian Creek Road right away south of Lucor Road to be vacated and removed. It calls out the west half of Indian Creek Road to be future trail by the City of Marion. In May in 2017, we had a memorandum agreement with Morris Wood Enterprises LLC with the approval of resolution 260159 to construct Tower Terrace Road from Winslow Road to Lennon Lane. And we have an MOA including closing Indian Creek Road south of Lucor and 35th Avenue west of Lennon Lane. This is actually a look at the intersection of Winslow and Tower Terrace as of yesterday. I went out and took the picture. Um, so once this road is completely poured, we will open it up, install the two stop signs, and then we will continue east to build it. I know there's also a question regarding the street blades out there and whether the road was actually named 35th Avenue or Tower Terrace Road. So in 2005, by ordinance number 539, we actually changed the name of 35th Avenue to Tower Terrace Road. Then ordinance 1036 in 2011, we actually changed it back <laughs> to 35th Avenue. So by ordinance, that street is 35, 35th Avenue, and that's why the resolution is stated as 35, 35th Avenue. Um, the street blade was never changed by Lynn County, and so Public service went out today and removed the street blade so it is not conflicting and it will, it will soon not exist anyways. So any questions about the three stop sign resolutions? You're dropping a mic now. <laughs> <laughs> very thorough. Thank you I for that. cars be able to go straight on what's currently Winslow Road after they stop at the stop sign? Yes. And North or south? Pardon me? Which direction are you talking? North? They'll be able to go north and south. Basically, this we're, we're cl we close this, the street temporarily to get the intersection in there. And so you'll be able to come down the old Winslow Road and either take the new Winslow Road or the old Winslow Road to Indian Creek while we're building this section, <coughs> which is planned to be completed this construction season, unless we get a monsoon that they can't finish it. When will that be open? This year, this construction season. You mean the intersection? The intersection will be open in about I two mean, weeks. I mean, when will Winslow Road be open so when people in Hunter Ridge can go home? Winslow Road and Tower Terrace will be open in about two weeks. Tower Terrace from that little section over Just this little Creek. section right here. That was the picture of the paving that I showed you. That, that goes to the right. That won't be done. Yeah, that'll. this will take most of the rest of the construction season to build. When will the section of Tower Terrace Road be done between the current Indian Creek Road and the Corn Hinge? This construction season. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? This construction season. Yeah. Pardon me? This, year. this construction this year. season. This year? Yes. So I have a question, too. You said that um, eventually the old Winslow is going away yes. once the bridge is in. Once the Tower Terrace bridge is in. Yes. yes. So how far? So will the how far will win, the old Winslow go north to where it will be taken out once the bridge is in? Basically, from this intersection north, old Winslow Road will go away, including the bridge that's currently deficient. Okay. So it won't go any further than Tower Terrace. Correct. But the southern section of Winslow will still be there. Yeah, we have some different designs that we can change how some of these developments tie in, but that's the plan is to leave So that you'll in be there. able to get off and on Win or Tower Terrace at Winslow just to the south only. So but people are going to have to go to 10th Street and over. And, and likely we'll rename this section to Indian Creek or something different, but that'll be down the road because the fire department and police department don't like it when we have multiple streets right. named the same thing. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay, so we have a motion by Will and a second by me for resolution 26929. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Motion passes. Uh, Randy? 
I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 26930, approving removal of a stop sign stopping westbound traffic on 35th Avenue intersection with Indian Creek Road. Second. Okay, motion by Randy, second by Will. Um, discussion? Uh, thank you for taking the sign down. It still doesn't say 35th Avenue, but my GPS doesn't agree with you either. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a while. <laughs> Would that stop sign be there before Indian Creek Road is closed? Basically, when we start They're actually building that section of Tower Terrace, that's when the stop sign will go away. So until Indian Creek closes at Tower Terrace, there will not be a stop sign there? When we start building this section of Tower Terrace, yeah. or the, there's not going to be very many people that use Indian Creek because it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be a dead end. So we can leave that stop sign in there, but it's not going to do any good because it's a dead end, basically. Well, no, except right now it's a gravel road and 20 mile an hour speed limit going to a 35 mile an hour speed limit road. Right, but this road, again, will become a dead end when Tower Terrace starts getting built through. We're going to have a trench of a road going through that. Will that road disappear then, 35th, when 35th Tower Terrace disappear. is done up to mm -hmm. Corn Inch? Yep. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor of resolution number 26930, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Okay, motion passes. Um, Paul. Uh, yeah, I don't want to make that motion if <laughs> someone else will. Okay. Um, Randy. Maybe. I would be happy to. Um, this will be for approving resolution number 26931, approving removal of a stop sign stopping eastbound traffic on Brookside Drive at its intersection with Indian Creek. Second. Okay, motion by Randy and a second by Will. Any discussion or questions? Time frame. Removing the stop sign? Not until we're building Tower Terrace. So that until. stop sign is going to stay there as long as Indian Creek is yes. the road it should remain. Yes. It doesn't say that. If you would like to amend the motion to put a timeline that not until half of Indian Creek Road is gone, you can do that if you want. Well, I'd like to table the whole thing, uh, but I don't know that anyone else would. But I would move that that stamp sign remains as long as Indian Creek Road is an active road. Is there a second for that? Is that an that amendment? That That's an amendment. amendment. I'll second that. Okay, an amendment um, by Paul, second by Steve for the stop sign remaining. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, and then back to the resolution 26931. All those in favor of the stop sign removal, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Okay, motion passes. Oh, yes, Your Honor, I make a motion to approve ordinance number 18-10, amending chapter 63 of the Code of Ordinances, establishing the speed limit on Elbernet Road as 35 miles per hour from the northern city limits, except that area from 400, or, yeah, 400 feet south of Oak Ridge School Drive to 400 north, feet north of Echo Hill Road, which shall be 25 miles per hour when children present to the south terminus of Albernet Road. Re remove code section 5D, 6G, and 6H, and add 5AC. This is the final consideration. Second. Okay, motion by Kim and a second by Steve. Any discussion? Um, Clark, I would just point out this is probably a really good thing for the bus drivers in the school district. Um, so this will be good news <laughs> to take back. <laughs> Safety first. Okay.
Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, um, moving on to planning and development. We have a public hearing regarding the annexation request from Genesis Equities Land Holding LLC for property east of Partners Avenue and south of Marion Airport Road, Marion, Iowa. Um, is there a little presentation? I can illustrate a map if you'd like, but if the council has enough information. If you could, just yep. since there's a public hearing, that, I think that would Absolutely. be good. Thank you, Tom. So the uh, following is a public hearing on the annexation of the property identified in blue. Uh, so this is uh, 151 east of 13 and then Marion Airport Road and this kind of tri or diagonal piece is the airport. You can see uh, the, it's just south of Culver's. Um, this is a 100% voluntary annexation. Um, so there's um, uh, generally I think we have uh, included others as non-consenting, so I consider this a pretty easy annexation <laughs> compared to some we've done in the past. And it would include uh, a future development of, of Aircom Business Park, um, which will uh, be a plat that extends and provides additional industrial properties out into the uh, area of the airport, um, particularly east of the airport. So um, if you go out there now, you can see there's a, a road that's been uh, graded in in the Oasis Volleyball. Uh, project is being proposed out there. I think the groundbreaking was a couple weeks ago. So um, if you've been out in the area, you can kind of see some work that's been done. And uh, this kind of expands the future industrial area for the city of Marion moving forward into the future. So um, as, as identified, this is the public hearing. There will be a resolution that follows to approve it. Um, there is a desire to get this thing uh, moving quickly, so I think we're asking the mayor to sign the resolution this evening and then move it forward to the Secretary of State for uh, authorization. Since this is a voluntary and we're outside the two mile jurisdiction uh, of Cedar Rapids, there's no additional review. Uh, and so it should be, uh, once it's signed by the Secretary of State, it should be ready to go. So this, when we've done annexations recently, we haven't had one this easy. So it's kind of nice to see one that's a little more uh, pleasant. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tom. Okay, um, public hearing is now open. Uh, those in favor of the annexation, or who would like to speak in favor of the annexation, please come up and do so. Yeah, Chad Brandle, 4317 Quiltro Drive, just speaking on behalf, uh, behalf of Genesis Equities. Um, I really don't have anything more to add um, than what Tom presented. You know, it's just, uh, it's part of the, you know, the airport lay layout plan. So uh, we just, uh, you know, Hope that you accept it and, and approve it tonight. So, but um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thanks, Chad. Anyone else in favor? Is there anyone who would like to speak against the annexation? Please come forward at this time. Okay. Seeing none. Yep. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 26932, approving annexation request from Genesis Equities Land Holding LLC for property east of Partners Avenue and south of Marion Airport Road, Marion, Iowa. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Steve and a second by Kim for resolution 26932. Any discussion? Paul? Tom? Show me where the airport runway is and Partners Avenue and so this is the uh, airport runway. Um, so Partners Avenue is right here. So you come off 151. Um, Police station is over to your left there. Yeah, it's yeah. off yeah. the page. Uh, Culver's okay. Garden Center is right here. Okay. Um, so and there's a church here. So you'd pull into the airport. The little Quonset hunt's about right there. Well, I think it's a little better over here. So 
and it, that wouldn't interfere if you move that up down by the trail where an east-west runway might be? Uh, no, no. Um, and, and what would happen if it does is it would be reflected in the plat, but it does not. I think the east-west runway is, is more in uh, uh, this position. Okay. Yep. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Will? I make a motion to approve resolution 26933, setting June 21st, 2018 as a public hearing regarding the property east of the Marion Airport runway and south of the Marion Airport Road to amend the future land use map of the Marion Comprehensive Plan. From Business Park Office to Light Industrial and to Corridor Commercial and from Light Industrial to Corridor Commercial and a request to rezone from Restricted Industrial I-1 to General Commercial C-3 and from Lynn County Agricultural to Residential and um, Restricted Industrial I-1 and to General Commercial C-3, Genesis Equities Land Holdings LLC. Second. That was the kitchen sink right there. Um, okay, a motion by Will, a second by Randy. Um, any discussion? Yes. <laughs> Did you want to say yes? Um, I didn't write that resolution title, the legal <laughs> department. Nice, <laughs> <Thanks, Ryan. laughs> Ryan. Um, this is just, uh, as, as a follow-up, generally we would put this on the consent calendar. Uh, however, uh, we can't proceed with setting the hearing until the, there's been action to annex. And so we're just setting a date um, for the uh, uh, public hearing regarding the uh, rezoning of the property. So this is just illustrating. So the, again, just for purposes, the longer piece is the current airport. Um, there is uh, the industrial areas continued. Uh, actually, that red should be here. Uh, this, this area is being zoned commercial. And then the lighter gray would be the industrial. Um, and when we get to the public hearing, we'll show you the, the full plat relative to the airport layout plan so you can kind of see the whole build out of it. But this is setting the date for the public hearing on the rezoning, and then we'll move it forward from there. I know we normally don't see this. That's why I just thought I'd give a little brief. Thank on. you. Yep. Okay. Um. We have a motion and a second for resolution number 26933. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Randy. I make a motion to approve resolution number 26934, approving the final plant memorandum of agreement for Echo Hill 3rd edition, located east of Elburnett Road and north of Echo Hill Road, Integrity Custom Homes, Incorporated. Second. Second by Randy and a second by Will. Discussion? Okay, seeing none. Um, all those in favor of resolution number 26934, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Paul? Yes, I have res resolution 26,935, approving the final plat memorandum of agreement for aud auditor's fifth edition located east of 31st Street and south of 35th Avenue, Morris Woods, LLC. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Paul and a second by Kim for resolution number 26935, approving the final plat and memorandum of agreement for author's fifth edition located east of 35th Street and south of 35th Avenue, Morris Wood Enterprises, LLC. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Kim? Yes, Your Honor. I make a motion to approve resolution number 26936, approving a final plat and memorandum of agreement for Downings Farm, third edition, south of Ketting Road and north of East Robbins Road. This is Mooney Engel Land Company, LLC. Second. Motion by Kim and a second by Steve. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of resolution number 26936, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 26937, approving a final plat and memorandum of agreement for Mid American. First addition to Lynn County at 2970 East Post Road in Lynn County, Iowa. Second. Motion by Steve and a second by Will. Um, discussion? Okay, seeing none. Um, all those in favor of resolution number 26937, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Your Honor, I, I have to abstain from this item. Okay. <laughs> um, and one abstention. Did But everybody else voted? Yes. Okay. Okay, um, we're going to have another public hearing regarding a request to vacate the southern 120 feet of north-south alley lying between <coughs> two lots six and seven, block seven, original town, now city of Marion, Lynn County, Iowa, Seven Hills East LLC. Uh, presentation from the S Town. So as indicated, this is a pro proposed uh, vacation, and you'll see the next item. There'll be a public hearing on the sale um, of the alleyway uh, just north of Eighth Avenue between Seventh Street and Eighth Street, as indicated here in red. Um, you can see the alleyways currently go both north and south through the block. The proposal is at this time is to uh, vacate and sell uh, the southernmost leg of those of those alleyways, and I, the staff report kind of lays out some details of it. Um, there, I don't believe there's any utilities in there, so it should be free and clear of those. Um, and then uh, you should have received on the dais this evening. There was some correspondence that was received via email. Um, Mr. Mr. Hill, representing Seven Hills East, is in the audience this evening, and he's been working with the property owners uh, relative to the conditions of the alleys. And that was kind of the concern at the planning commission meetings, and I think I made mention of that. There were a couple of folks um, that had some concerns with uh, the alley access going away and some of the conditions, and, and he may want to explain what he's talked to uh, with the residents about that uh, situation, and he's working with them to improve the overall, and therefore we did receive correspondence from someone that says they are supporting um, the project as indicated after conversation with Mr. Hill, so. Okay. Okay, at this time we will open the public hearing. Um, anyone who would like to come up and speak in favor of this? Um, request to vacate. Please come up, state your name and your address for the record, please. My name is Joe Hill and I represent Seven Hills East and this is regarding my three properties on 8th Avenue, 742, 758, 786th Avenue. Can you point out which ones those are? Yeah, those are the three oh. lots, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Oh, I can't. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can see that. And as um, was mentioned, um, I met with uh, the owner that voiced some opposition um, with access to his property being the garages that he has in lot number one, or wait, uh, lot number two, and um, we met on there on this, uh, about three weeks ago out there and you know, I listened to what his concerns was and, and then I ran it by the city, um, Dave and building and zoning and we've, I've come up with the idea that he, I'll let him continue to use the alley until which time that I don't need it with the, with the idea being I'll give him a 30-day notice that he can't use it anymore, number one. And number two, I will, at my expense, um, resurface and repave the alley that goes from um, where the red line is all the way to Ninth Avenue. Um, and so that will make it so, because his concern was that the alleyway was not, was impassable. It's not, it's not in the greatest of shape and there's a lot of dips and, and, and bumps and different things <laughs> in there. So, um, and, and today he's forwarded an email to me as well as to the city uh, that he says, if you're willing to do that and put it on the record, he says, I have no opposition to um, uh, you having the alley vacated to, to you, so. Great. Thanks for um, working with the residents in the city to iron out that. And, and also today I went over to Public Works to make sure that there was any, any issues that I might come up with and then I spent time down here at the, um, talking to Tracy um, as, as well, what I have to do to do that and the, the hold harmless agreements and there's some other agreements that I may have to 
um, do if, if there wasn't a curb cut that has to be done, there's a permit that has to be done, and whatever the city or whatever I need to do, I, I have no problem doing it. Um, in addition to that, um, there's another alleyway that goes to 7th Street, and I, I, I've made it be known that I would do the same thing there. So, and right now, the, it's just, a, it's full of grass, and that's the one where there's no curb cuts on, and that's what, when I talk to um, the public works today, that, but that's, yeah, yeah, that one right there. Um, and that's something that's in the work. That gives multiple lines of, you know, access to all the properties involved that way. They're, they're again, at my expense. And expenses high I had. Um, right now, I'm having the parking lot re-asphalted, and I've talked to um, them about giving me bids, and the bids, like, for those two alleyways, they're about six, $7,000 each to do oh. those. I've got, to, I've got to say, I commend you on, on extending that extra effort to to uh, work with your neighbors. Uh, so you. I would have to think a lot of people would not do that. So uh, the extra efforts uh, certainly are always appreciated. Thank you. Uh, and to fortify that, is that alley even passable between the end of the red and over to 7th? It's not very good. good. It's, it's in not pretty bad good. shape. Right, and the reason why I would do it as an, I want to keep it as an alley. Um, you know, you could, you know, they could, that alley could be vacated, but then you lose the alley and then you lose access to those properties. Right. And so I thought it through and I think the best solution is to redo it at the, at the no cost to the city and it benefits me on my future plans for my lots yeah. um, that I have but there. If so. you go look at it, you'd realize what a good job he's doing, you know. Yeah. Because oh yeah, that, that's very rough. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Did that answer the, the yep. question? Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Joel. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to come up and speak in favor of the vacation? Okay. Is there anyone here who would like to speak against the vacation of the alleyway? Please come up and state your name and address for the record. Mark Schleeman. I own a property at 860 8th Street. <laughs> And I need to know that I will have permanent access to the back of that property. And he's saying it is. I just need it written that I will have access because I've got retaining wall along the whole front of the house. There's no parking in front of the house. And what I want to do is I want to put a couple of parking spots in the back. And if I have permanent access, there is, I don't have an issue with what he's doing. But we also want to be able to. Yeah, I don't. Um, okay, I mean, I, we don't speak on that at this but time. We're just hearing from you. I think we can talk about that during discussion, but we certainly want to know what you your concerns are. You told us how it's going to be parked. We can just park there. Over here. Yeah, where, where, um, Mark, right. where are you located? Right here. The property is 868th Street. So and the only access to the house, really, because the retaining right. walls all along the front, is from the back. Right, gotcha. You're talking about the east-west alley. East West, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is it's a north south right alley. We w yeah, we had the one that's going to be resurfaced, he said. Could you state your name and address too, just since you're in the audio? Sorry. You're fine. Just um, it's Lynn south. Schleeman. Okay. Um, okay. I don't know. Can I don't know that we can answer that at this time. Right now, we're just hearing from the public, but when we close the public hearing, we can discuss that. We can't make that guarantee at this moment for okay, you. Okay, but the next thing is to purchase everything, so how do we guarantee our part of it if he's purchasing the other portion? Um, I think there's another public hearing for the purchase coming up right after this. This is just for the vacation. So there'll be, there'll be action once it's closed. There'll be Yeah, that was my only concern. We, we just want to make sure we have access because if you look at all the properties around here, they're all businesses except for our one residential property. And the only access we have, if trees fall down or anything else, is through that alleyway. Mm -hmm. It's not from the front. But don't you have access from the alleyway from 8th Street? No. 8th Street. Eighth. There's not. Yeah, anywhere Street. And 8th Street is only parking on one side of the road, so that limits the number of parking, too. That makes it even 
harder if they have visitors or if you got business people that take up part of that road? Is there think not that. an east-west alley there? It's an east-west alley, so how do you... That's been vacated. So that's been vacated. That's not ago. there. Right. Wait a minute, it's grass. You. Yeah? It's not being used. It's not. It's not it's usable? It's non-existent. No. Okay. That's what I wanted. It's, yeah, it's part of the parking lot for the complex that's on that side of it. And there's nothing between our house and their properties there because we have a fence right next to it. Oh, so your lot is 860. It goes all the way from 8th Street to the north-south alley. alley? Yep. Okay. I, okay, I was Correct. confused by that. Okay. So his, his option or what he's suggesting he's going to do is pave that provide you with the access that you're saying you need? We need the pavement. So, yeah, because right now we're bottoming out in smaller vehicles in that part of the alleyway. And we'd also need, like, an easement for the back side of the house okay. so we can have room to, yeah. to park. Yeah. In my opinion, he's doing a, a very tremendous thing for you guys. As long as we can guarantee that's followed through. Okay. Okay. Thank you both. Did y'all um, get a yellow ticket earlier since you spoke? If you just could before you leave this evening, um, there are little yellow tickets up here. If you could fill them out. And um, Joel, I'm not sure if you did as well. I, sh I meant to mention it. You have it? Terrific. Is there... Come back up and you got to give your name and address again, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Joel Hill, Seven Hills East. Um, what they, The reason why I offered to... Uh, to, uh, at my cost, do the alleyway going from the red all the way to 9th Avenue and going to 7th Street, there'll be two access points in, which will take away any concern that they have. The only, and, and I'm leaving, I'm, I'm not putting, you know, just like I'm giving Jamie, who's in lot number one, access to mine with his trailer until at which time I block, you know, at some point in time it'll be blocked, but I can't see it in the, in the foreseeable near future. Okay. But in the interim, um, that's why I want to pave those two alleys to keep them as alleys. There will always be access to those the, to the alley, which would be this one here mm -hmm. and this one here. So, see, they would have access to the back side of their property all the time. Yep. So you feel and comfortable with what they're asking, that yeah, that's that, not an issue? In, in, in addition to that, I'll make them the same deal that they can continue to use the old alley, the vacated alley that – we're here today for the hearing. Um, and I'll say, hey, I'm, I'm going to no longer be able to do that, and I'll give you the 30-day notice, just like I offered to Jaime, in the, or Jaime Hoff, the, 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 the owner of unit of the space number, uh, lot number one. The same offer that he did. You could still use the 8th the, the Avenue mm -hmm. entrance, but it's, you know, everybody knows that 8th Avenue is really busy. And if I get those two other alleyways paved, the access points are going to, there's no traffic on the 9th Avenue and there's no, there's no traffic on the 7th um, Street as well. It's a lot easier to enter the property. As a matter of fact, for them, if I pave that other alley that's all grass back there now, it's a straight shot into their backyard. Okay. Okay. You see how they go straight mm -hmm. into yep. the backyard there. So, did, did that, does that answer? Yeah, this is permanent access. From 7th Street and from 9th Avenue. Yeah, correct? absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that was just our main concern because yeah. you said something about shutting off and. No, no, just the just the, the just the alley space between the where the red is. Just one question. Do Wait, Mark. I'm sorry, Mark. You you have to come Mark. up. Just it's Mark. very official. <laughs> Name and address again, and you can okay. ask your question. Mark Schleiman. What I have is, uh, are you going to own these? Is it going to be? No, no, this I will, will not. still be city property. The, still, the alleys will still be city owned property. That's exactly what I needed. Thank you. Okay. That's all. Okay. Very good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Joel, for coming back up and clarifying that. Is there anyone um, else to speak against or to ask additional questions about this alley vacation? Okay. Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Um, I'd like, to, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 26938, approving a request to vacate the southern 120 feet of the north-south alley 
lying between two lots, six and seven, block seven, original town, now city of Marion, Lynn County, Iowa, Seven Hills East, LLC. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Steve and a second by Kim for resolution 26938. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, we have another public hearing regarding the sale of the vacated property described as the southern 120 feet of the north-south alley lying between two lots, six and seven, block seven, original town, now city of Marion, Lynn County, Iowa, Seven Hills East, LLC. Tom, there's nothing new to add here. Well, I, I just there was just a conversation on the sale. So the red, the red portion is being sold, but the other alleys are, would remain public. And just for clarification, when you talk about permanent, so the alleys are, their alleys now, access will be provided in perpetuity until such time someone made a request to vacate. And then the same process would follow through in the event someone chose okay. to do that. So I, there's never a forever. Date, right? There is Not a in this process, case. so I just want to make sure that Thank everybody's you. aware. We would be right back here doing the same thing from a public perspective. So you would be notified in, if that's going to move forward. So. Thank you, Tom. Yep. Okay. At this time, if there's anyone who would like to come up and speak in favor of this um, sale, please come up and state your name and address. Anyone to speak against it? Okay, public hearing's closed. I think we covered all of it kind of in one, so. Um, Will. Yes, I make a motion to approve resolution 26939, approving the sale of the vacated su southern 120 feet of the north-south alley between, lying between lots six and seven, block seven, original town, now city of Maryland County, Iowa, and directing manor of execution of deed, Seven Hills East LLC. Second. We have a motion by Will and a second by Paul for resolution 26939. Any discussion? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I have a couple of questions for Tom. This is uh, obviously because it is pertaining to this, but when those two alleys are resurfaced, do we have a hold harmless for that? And there's also, is there still an understanding that we do not maintain those surfaces going forward uh, the we would not maintain them that would be and I believe that the process Ryan may be able to speak more to that than myself uh, we, <laughs> we have a level of maintenance to find we do not maintain them um, as the uh, as he indicated uh, they would pay for all the paving in the alleyway for them to do that they would need to hold harmless to do that so. okay very good thank you thank you anyone else um, motion by Will, second by Paul. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Andy? I make a motion to receive, file, and discuss a letter from Bradley and Riley regarding the 29th Avenue access fees for Prairie Hill, 16th edition, final plat located south of 29th Avenue and west of Highway 13. This will be the platinum development. Second. Motion by Randy and a second by Steve. Even file. Any discussion? Okay. Okay. It doesn't. Are we? Um, we are. I'm sorry. I'm not sure of your name, but I believe you're coming up to speak yeah. on that. So, so if you could just state your name and address for the record. I think I saw you with a yellow ticket Will already. Uh, my name is. <coughs> excuse me, Dean Spina. Uh, I wrote the letter that you're uh, receiving. Um, I'm at 2007 First Avenue Southeast, Cedar Rapids. I represent Platinum Development. I'm an attorney. Um, what I'd like to do is just briefly highlight the, the scope of the, or the content of the letter that I sent. I appreciate the, if you've had a chance to read it. But basically, Platinum Development acquired this property that is being platted as uh, Prairie Hill 16th Edition. Uh, they paid good money for it. They had an abstract of title extended, and they examined it. Our office examined it. There was no indication in that abstract of title that there was any sort of access fee uh, for the 29th Avenue improvements. 
we found at the time of completion of the, the planning and request for approval that uh, this ordinance is, in the, is on your books. Um, the ordinance is not recorded and it's our belief that under Iowa Code Section 558.41, which I'll read as a short sentence, that an instrument affecting real estate is of no validity against subsequent purchasers for a valuable consideration without notice unless the instrument is filed and recorded in the county in which the real estate is located. Um, had the ordinance or had a memorandum of the ordinance been recorded, uh, we wouldn't be here because the developer would not have paid the amount of money that they paid for the property um, without having that lien take that claim, that lien or whatever you want to call it taken care of by the purchase, the seller, which was a bank. Uh, Prairie Hill, the developer prior to uh, my client uh, may have entered into an agreement with the city, but nothing was record of record so that the rest of the world knew about that agreement. The ordinance itself is not picked up by the abstract companies when they ex create the abstract. It shows what's of record. Uh, my, so under Iowa law, there's three ways that uh, this might be uh, brought to the attention of, of the pur purchaser. One is that it gets recorded. The second would be that there's notice of it. So somehow my client, if they had notice of it, they couldn't st I couldn't stand here and say, you can't impose this upon them. So they had no notice of it. And the third being if there's some other public record, such as the tax, tax rolls, uh, that would reflect the existence of this obligation. Um, this was, could have been done as a special assessment. If it had been done as a special assessment after uh, the, these processes through Iowa Code Chapter 384, uh, the filing with the, sec uh, with the treasurer would have given notice to the world that there's a potential for a special assessment amount. We wouldn't have bought, you wouldn't buy this real estate without having that taken care of. My client had none, none of those, uh, did not have notice. Uh, w there was nothing in the abstract and there was nothing in the records of the treasurer. So we'd ask that uh, the plat be approved uh, without the condition that the 143,000 plus as in increases as time goes on um, with interest uh, that without <coughs> having to pay that amount. It's the only thing that it, uh, is fair. If we are, do not have relief, then we have to find another way to try to uh, get rid of this obligation uh, and that is ultimately on the court system uh, to have this declared uh, not a, not, uh, have it declared that it's not a lien that we have to pay that the purchaser for good, uh, bona fide purchaser for value should not have to pay this amount. So that's uh, in a brief nutshell of what my, my letter uh, reflects. Um, I understand you'll be going into closed session in two weeks perhaps to discuss this. And in the interim, uh, I was asked if, if the client would like to meet with the city staff again prior to your, your meeting in two weeks and we'll certainly endeavor to do that uh, to see if there's something that can be worked out. But we would really uh, request the relief that uh, is set forth in my letter. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Thanks, Dean, for uh, summarizing that. Okay, um, so we have a motion to receive, file, and discuss a letter. I don't know if um, anybody, discuss. yeah, I don't <laughs> think discuss is appropriate on here. Um, okay, all those in favor to receive and File this letter, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, terrific. Moving on to administration, Paul. Yes, Your Honor. Ordinance number 18-17, designating an area of Marion, Iowa, as the 2018 Workforce Housing Urban Revitalization Area. And this is a second consideration. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Paul and a second by Kim. Any discussion? Saying none. Um, all those in favor of ordinance number 18-17, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Kim. 
Mr. Owner, I make a motion to approve resolution number 26940, approving memorandum of under understanding with Culver Enterprises, LLC, regarding tax increment financing incentives. Second. We have a motion by Kim and a second by Steve. Is, is this the one um, that Tuesday I asked yeah. if we could get, yeah, information about how the Economic Development Committee looked at this? Um, the pavers were what were in question. I don't believe I received anything. I don't know if anybody else did. I, did not. Or I know that y'all weren't here. I don't know if that was passed or, or what happened, but none of us has received that. Yeah, the uh, Economic Development Committee, when they took a look at this, uh, I think as the Council is aware, um, there are provisions in the Economic Development Policy relating to a couple of different things um, for businesses to be able to qualify for incentives. One is the but-for test, which we talk about a lot, that if we help with the, don't help with the project, it's not going to be able to proceed. The other one is the public purpose test. So we've applied the public purpose test most frequently to um, sprinkler systems in buildings where it's not required by code. The committee has consistently recommended approval of that to the city council. Uh, this was an unusual one in that it was a proposal from the builder to do stormwater improvements in excess of what was required by code. And this is an unusual property in that um, the back of the property angles over into a very large regional, regional detention basin that serves most of that area around 3rd Avenue. But as you get closer to 44th Street, it naturally flows towards the street and it has a little stream that actually collects that water, goes under 44th and goes over into Squaw Creek. And the committee deliberated on it for quite a while about how to approach this, whether or not um, this was something that should qualify for um, assistance under the public purpose test as well. And in the end, concluded that um, there was a, pu a legitimate public purpose served by um, businesses that were going beyond code requirements. Um, and when you talk about why would we do something to incent businesses to go beyond code requirements for stormwater improvements, well, the simple fact of the matter is, is that current requirements for stormwater improvements simply aren't enough. You know, Marion has experienced it in 2002, 2008, 2010, 2013. Um, just doing the minimum isn't enough to reduce um, stormwater problems around the community and then further south of the community. So they, the recommendation was to bring a policy amendment to this proposal to the city council that businesses could qualify for the equivalent of one year 100% of tax rebate if they do stormwater improvements that are in excess of what's required by code. The idea was is that there would be a carrot there, but it would also be um, limited to just that one year. You could do it in two years, 50%, three years, 33%. I mean, the structure can be done different ways, but uh, that was the idea is that um, subsequent to the approval of this MOU and that discussion that a, an addendum to the economic development policy outlining this would be brought forward to the city council for approval. Thank you. Um, anyone have any questions or discussion? Yeah, some of the other discussion we had on Tuesday was just talking about the concern that the effectiveness of pavers like this is only going to benefit anybody as long as it's maintained in, in the proper manner and that there's also already was discussion talking about uh, an area the city already had that maybe is not uh, been maintained and therefore not being effective for its intended purpose. So, you know, I'm, I think you've got some concern about starting the precedent here, but yet doing it in an area that doesn't give you a long-term benefit. Yeah, and in most of cases, um, businesses that were going to come in and look at doing something like this would qualify underneath the stormwater policy. There's actually an incentive built into that. But in this case, this lot had already received that by virtue of having the big detention basin on the back. So there wasn't an incentive or incentive structure available through the stormwater utility that the business could take advantage of to compensate for that additional upgrade. So like I said, this is an unusual situation. It's um, I don't know how much demand there would be for it 
or something like that, but you're absolutely correct. Maintenance is critical on these type of passive uh, systems in order to be able to keep them functional. Um, even City Hall has ones that we have to periodically go out and maintain. Now in talking with Steve Cooper, our stormwater coordinator, um, like anything else, the technology in these continues to advance, <coughs> continues to get better, continues to become uh, more low maintenance. Um, I'm not sure what uh, his responsibilities are for an ongoing basis as far as inspections of these to make sure that they're being maintained and still in use. Uh, Mike might have some more insight on that than I do, but um, that would be something that I think we would bring back as part of the policy recommendations for council. Um, I, I kind of, I understand everything you're saying, um, but I, don't feel strongly enough that that piece of this MOU I'm okay with. I'm okay with the other piece of it and I don't know how to, I don't want to set a precedent for something that can be taken care of with the um, stormwater basin. The, um, so I, I don't know how to, how to vote. I don't know if I'm alone. So I guess, um, I guess I'm asking for some assistance here on this particular. I would have to vote no on the whole thing since it's not broken apart um, is that right? The, what you would have to do would be to make a motion to approve the MOU with provisions relating to stormwater uh, removed. Can, can you talk about the amount in here for the stormwater drainage piece of this is 159000 over a period of not to exceed two years for the incremental property tax collections. So what, what is the yes, what is the total cost for putting in these pavers? That was the total cost of the original that estimates for doing that. But um, when we uh, made the conditional offer to Mr. Culver, uh, he did scale that back based on the amount that uh, the one year 100% equivalent would cover. Um, we just put it in the agreement at the maximum of the request, knowing that it would be based off of actual invoices that he would have to provide for what it actually cost. Um, everything that he had done so far was, was engineer's estimates. And he hadn't gone to the point yet of even asking his engineer to come in and do the full redesign of the parking lot or anything like that. One more question. Is, is, this, is this covering the entire parking lot or just an area of the parking lot? It's an area of the parking lot. Yep. What he has to do is the original, if I remember correctly, the original design of the parking lot was basically flat with a slope that would run everything off. Right. Um, to do this, it would have to be redesigned and to kind of slope down to direct water down to the area where the permeable pavers would be and then the water could filter through um, and come in and be treated before it goes over into the drainage channel. Okay. So it's more than just a simple taking out concrete and then putting pavers in instead. The conventional way of, of running concrete, does, does the water then go back out to the curb or does it go into the retention pond? Only the water from the back buildings goes into the detention pond on this property. The way it's set up and the way it lies, the the back of the property angles towards the detention pond, but there's a break point where everything else comes toward the street. So in this case here, traditionally the water will run into the street or and through the, the pavers will go through the process. Right. Okay. And this is the first time we've really had a proposal like this. So that's why I think the Economic Development Committee really um, had a, a good discussion on it and why we expected to have further discussions on it with the City Council. Hmm. Yeah, for me until those happen <coughs> and I have more detail, I was hoping to see more from that discussion because I'm I'm personally not comfortable with providing TIF. I'm afraid it sets an incentive for something I don't quite understand. The, um, you know, the sprinklers is a public um, safety benefit and I know we've done that and that one seems to make sense but I'm not comfortable with this. It's only for a partial um, and so I hate, you know, I guess I will wait to hear what the other discussion is, but I might try to amend so that I can vote well, for comes, something. It comes back to that much like 
wastewater treatment permits. The city of Marion has a national pollutant discharge permit for stormwater around the community as well. And most of your traditional collection systems that pull in everything off of the streets, stormwater, um, they don't treat water. So whatever oils, grits, sands, anything that are in there end up going off into the streams. When you put in the uh, permeable pavers and those types of systems, it actually will pull it in and it has an opportunity to filter that out and then clean the water before it goes off and goes off into the streams. Um, ultimately in Marion, it's basically Indian Creek and Squaw Creek. So there's more uh, environmental benefit to the community for doing that by reducing pollutants going off into into the discharge. So it helps us make sure that we're maintaining compliance with our national pollutant discharge permit. And I, I'm going to go back and ask the question one more time. I just want to make sure if a traditional parking lot's put in, there is no discharge back into the stream. Is that correct? I believe the building to the north of where that drainage ditch is would actually come down towards that drainage ditch. So then that would be monitored and policed basically by the DNR or conservation or who monitors that discharge into the public stream if, there, if we do have issues with contaminated waters? Um, we're responsible for doing the initial ones. Um, I think there's a procedure there for calling in the DNR if there's a contamination issue, if, if fish kills or anything like that. Yeah, if somebody calls in and says there's, we've had it before where leaves are decaying, is that correct? And they'll call in and say there's something floating in it. Uh, what we do is we get a, a sample packet that we get from the um, University of Iowa. We actually go down there and get the packet, take a sample <coughs> of it. Um, sometimes the EPA calls, sometimes the DNR calls if there's something like that and somebody reports it. But it actually flows back down to us because they want us to address it rather than have the DNR or EPA show up. Okay, sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I'm not that educated on that portion of it, so I appreciate the details. One more question. I, I know there was a project downtown Cedar Rapids. Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust in their new parking lot <coughs> did, a public, did a paver system in that so that all of the water would not run off into the street. And I know that actually adjoins First Avenue, so I understand the concern there, but they had some city incentives for doing that project. Is this the same type of paver <coughs> system construction that will go on with this project as they did down there? I don't know for sure what system he would propose to use. Um, uh, that would be engineered as part of doing the overall project. Um, but obviously, uh, Mr. Culver has a bit of a leg up on those of us that don't do these types of things on a, on a daily or weekly basis to know what systems work and which ones do not. Can, can Mr. Culver come up and talk about the design of this paper system? I, I think it's some technology, it's some design that some of us are not familiar with. So if we look at this from the standpoint of passing the public purpose test, I'm kind of on the fence as well. And the as far as whether this passes that test. And with Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust, I am not sure how that incentive was done, uh, but I suspect it was done through their stormwater utility credit programs that they I believe had a it was. monthly credit towards their bills for doing that upgrade. Yes. In this case, the entire property had already been granted that credit because it's got the rear stormwater detention basin. Okay, Todd, if you have any pictures that you could show, do you have, and I know you weren't prepared to speak, um, but if any explanation you can give to help us better understand would be great. So, no, I don't have any pictures other than that just diagram brought, because we didn't know engineering on this could cost $10,000. So MMS and Iowa City does a lot of them. Brain Engineering has done some for, not Brain, uh, Anderson Bogert's done some for me. We did this on a project on Blairs Ferry Road. Um, so, I mean, as far as they do all the engineering on it, we just, we build what they tell us to build. So, I don't have anything, so to not knowing this is going to pass, this is actually suggested by Steve Cooper. I didn't have this part of the project. I, I did all the engineering, and then he suggested it, and I'm just trying to accommodate sure. what he wanted. I mean, if, if it doesn't go, I guess it's okay, but I mean, he was trying to work with what the suggestion was. So I don't have I don't have that for you yet. I mean I, I could it certainly be done with the engineering process. So to to add anything on that right now, I I'm unprepared. Can you tell us in in, in a general sense once the water goes through the pavers, is it going down into a collection system, 
Or where's, where's the water going once it goes down through the papers? It, it can go into the sand or to, into the ground, or else it can, and there's, depends sometimes, like Anderson Bogart did when they had an over, overflow discharge, if it got too full. But um, it all depends on the, the soil samples. I mean, if you've got a clay ground, I mean, it's not going to go in the clay, but if you have a sandy soil, it'll go down into the soil. Mm -hmm. As it goes down through the soil, it filtrates. So you're, just, you're saying that the, the effectiveness of it is going to be dependent upon the soil that's going to be underneath it? This particular soil is not very clay from my understanding, so it, it would mostly in. would go into the soil. But so there again, there again, all that has to be engineered, so we're kind of like a new beginning point. I didn't want to invest the money unless I knew we had some sure. participation. Yep. So is there still the possibility that all of the water would not go down through the papers but still run off into the area we're talking about doing? if it was a complete concrete parking lot? Well, I think the, the, the major concern was it would, the hard surface is going to flow pretty quickly into the, in, into the drainage way, where this actually slow it down. If you slow stuff down, you're not moving particles as quickly and it filtrates better. I mean, if you got some, some quick moving water, it's going to move product or particles. If yeah. you have some product that goes into the ground, it's going to, slow down and slow moving water uh, filtrates. So, um, well that's on the screen. I don't know, do y'all have, are you able to point to what pieces of that? Do you have a so the sections that are red would be the pervious pavers. Okay. So you can see the arrows where he's actually lowering, there's a depression where the pervious pavers would be. So if he didn't maintain those pavers, he would have water standing in his parking lot. Mm -hmm. And, and that red, I had, we have a person in our office that he actually quotes all of these, and he took some previous projects, and he, that's what he believes is going to have to be done, but that's not engineered yet. But I know Steve this said the whole parking lot, but it's not necessary to the whole parking lot. You just got to be able to collect the parking lot into a section. So what is that? Do you know what the general elevation changes between that island, so to speak, and the curb to the outside? I'm just curious as to what I the don't. degree of pitch is. I don't. No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So one of my concerns is it's only effective as long as it's maintained. Otherwise, you right. got a short-term project, not a long-term. So how do you maintain these? What is what's involved in you, your company, maintaining these in the future? There's actually a vacuum. You actually can go through, and there's a uh, to so there's little holes between like the particle, like the corners and things of the pavers or the paint of the design might be several. And there's a vacuum that goes like, you know, you get mulch or you know, just decomposed leaves or just grit, dirt itself, and then you can actually suck that out. You can do that once a year typically, it's pretty good. Mike, you don't happen to have in your bag of tricks there what the floodplain, you know, where the 100 year and the whatever how this land in particular lies in terms of rain yeah, accumulation? Pretty cool. Not necessarily the floodplain, but these dashed lines here. This dashed line okay. here and this dashed line here. What are those represent? That's actually the, it's, it's an unnamed tributary to Squaw Creek. So those are actually wetland boundaries, I believe. So that's why he can't disturb into those boundaries. Um, so by getting those contaminants through the, the, the pervious pavers and into the, the clean one inch rock underneath, he's helping to protect those wetlands as well. Gotcha. And so, Lon, this is what you mean by this is kind of an unusual situation because of the layout, et cetera, where it is and what's around it? Yeah, it's very seldom that we see a parcel like this where it's actually divided by having a drainage channel like that coming down through it. And really, you know, when this area was originally platted and they developed that large detention basin, it was intended that it would serve the entire area. But I think they envisioned that it would be, you know, three or four gigantic uses, not a bunch of smaller ones as it ultimately has come out to be. And the ask on this is 159,000 max. It might come in under. And in I think the. Uh, when we had re-estimated it and uh, talked with Todd about it, looking at that number, I think it, we were actually expecting it to be somewhere more around 60,000. Oh, 
that's significant. Because that's about the equivalent of the one year 100%. So that was what we offered. It's just without him having a chance to go back and engineer it and get those numbers in there, we put in the higher number to err on the side to give ourselves the ability to go above that if we needed to. But it would still be limited to the equivalent of that one year 100% number or two years 50%. So for me, I feel better about it having seen this, and I think this was what I kind of was looking for from Tuesday, just how the decision was made, because what I don't want is for businesses to come in and everybody wants to do this all of a sudden and this becomes something that's constantly tiffed. But I do see, um, because of the split through the, the piece of property, that this could actually benefit in a multiple, um, in a variety of ways, so. Yeah, that would probably sway me too. I mean, I worked out in that area for many, many years, <clears throat> and so I know how much water can flow through there or, har or has at, at you know, a number of different times. So as I see the picture here, you know, and knowing the, the benefit that that may get, I probably would not be in favor of this in a lot of other yeah. applications, uh, given this unique one. You know, if he wants to spend that extra money, I guess I, at this point in time I would be in favor of it. I would suspect that in most cases the the incentive through the stormwater's utility is going to be sufficient. It's just that in this case that's not available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I agree. Anyway. What, con what, I was gonna say, what concerns me is that we don't have any type of, um, I guess, rules in place for if they, we do tip, tip something like this for um, follow-up to make sure that things are being done correctly or being maintained. Um, I mean, you said you were looking at that. I mean, what do you think in time frame of having something in place? Uh, I don't know if we can have it queued up for the second meeting in June, but certainly by the first one in July. I mean, is that, if this were to be tabled until something like that was figured out, is that with your time schedule as far as uh, <laughs> construction? <laughs> This is just the MOU. Um, if you remember the development agreement, which has all of the formal terms and everything, and it still has to come back True. to the city council, True. that has to go through public hearing, and that has to go through final approval. So council will see everything on it again. Yeah. And yeah. and you can put, we can, you'll come up with some contingencies for consideration. Yeah, I think it was the intent of the group. We wanted this type of thing to be fairly narrow because the intent of having a stormwater utility, of course, is that it should be standalone and should be able to fund right. the stormwater improvements and programs that you want throughout the community. But much like we ran into with the uh, development of Dr. Heinz Vet Clinic, there are some of these older parcels that were developed that we're running into some quirks with that uh, can be pretty tough to achieve your policy goals without providing a little bit of help. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for doing something like this. I just want to make sure there's some yeah. provisions in That's place to point. make sure that I'd like to no, make mention that our family has a very similar building on 62nd. Now I guarantee it's drier out there. We had to put a pond in. Frogs all died the first year because there's never any water in it. We get a tiny little bit of water off the drive like you're going to, mm -hmm. but not a lot, guys. I mean, it, uh, we lost a, a big piece of that land with a pond out there. Todd, thanks for yep. letting us put you on the spot. Thank you. Mm. Yep. Um, any? I mean, we, would we be able to table this and then have it come back at the same time? Or pos I guess I don't know where you're at with the, the uh, agreement with them for the rest of it. Uh, it'll be a while before the development agreement comes back to the council because we have to do the urban renewal plan amendment and then bring the development agreement back. Uh, I don't know if we have that calendar yet for this one, but I don't think the development agreement probably would be back before August or September. So we potentially could revisit this mm -hmm. in July before everything's done. Final details. That'd be my suggestion. Just to the sense I'm getting from the council isn't necessarily about the uh, the incentive in this particular project, that equivalent of 100% for one year, but more about what's the follow-up, the administrative provisions, and what do you do to qualify it to make sure that it doesn't just open up uh, well, 
excuse the pun, a floodgate of people coming in looking right. for uh, incentives for stormwater assistance. So we can make sure that the parameters are, would be fairly tight to very unique projects. Well, that, and to Will's point, I think, I don't know how once you give that incentive, if it's not maintained, if a penalty or some kind of payback could be instituted so that the city could get its money back for something they incented that isn't being followed through with, which is what I, like, I don't know if that's part of what y'all are considering. Um, I get that it's narrow, and I do understand in this particular case how it could be a benefit. Um, and normally that, that type of provision is not something that would show up in the MOU, but it would show up in the development agreement. The most common way communities do that is to provide the incentive but tie it to a forgivable loan or something like that so that there's a check-in period, you know, at five years or ten years that it gets inspected to make sure it's been maintained and still is in operation. So there's a clawback provision in the agreement. But if you want to, feel free. I'm fine with that. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone going to make any kind of different motion before we? Okay. I so, just, well, I would oh just yeah. say I, I would like to see that in the, in the agreement in the future. Come I think what know. makes this one difficult for me is it's not a one and done. You know, if we do put something in an agreement, who's just going to police it? That's why we need to have something right. in Right. I mean, agreement. until somebody says, yes, it's pooling and ponding and it's not doing what it was designed to do, we just paid for a parking lot. I'm a little, I'm still way on the fence on this one myself. And I, I appreciate the work that's going into it. I understand it, but because we're trying to keep things out of that creek and obviously out of the storm sewer, but if it, if it fails, it's going to continue to do the same thing. And if I understand this correctly, flash, flash flooding is going to do the same as well. This will not capture flash flooding, which is what, you know, that area is, it's a lot of, it's a lot of street, a lot of concrete. And that's, you know, I think we've all seen that, but I, I share the same concerns and it's, it's, it's not putting a sprinkler system in. It's not, it's not a one and done. It's but I, I think because we're deal. in the same issue, but I feel like the teeth are coming in the future agreement. And so if the teeth aren't in that, we have another opportunity. Right. And that's what just concerns me a little bit is, is I just want to make sure I don't want to put the staff and, and Mr. Culver through the process if, if this comes back and it, and we turn it down again because we've, we've been in this position before on these MOUs and understanding. So I think it's just something that we should all share in that thought as we go forward here in the next moment to make that decision. I want to res be respectful of everyone's time to make sure we're mo we are moving in the right direction on that. But again, that's just my personal opinion. Well, I'm going to be trusting some of the effectiveness of this because it's <coughs> going to be engineered by the right firm who has done it a number of times and knows how to do it. Right. So I agree, if you got flash flooding, it's not going to be as effective. But for the majority of the rains, it should do its intended purpose if engineered correctly and built correctly. So and I'm and kind of going on that. And maintained. And maintained <laughs> correctly. And, and okay. the other piece that I think helps it is it's not the entire parking lot. No. So um, it's almost like a good, a good way to... Well, it's a component because of the way the land is. So this is strategically being yep. done because of the elevation and, and the runoffs and the engineering of the whole picture. So I, I can appreciate that. You know, I'm sure this came in as a card as saying, hey, this is an option. And, and that's why we're where we are today with it. So again, I, in my mind, it's just does it meet the language of the TIF? That's, that's, my, that's my whole plateau. But It's stretching it. Yep, and I and I can appreciate everybody's input on it. It's <laughs> it's a good it's a good project. Well, it's a good discussion. Um, do you or anyone else want to make a different motion, or or I'm getting ready to take a vote on this? Yeah, I guess first yeah, I, yeah. we're under the understanding from the city manager that uh, it's going to be coming back. So I'm perfectly yeah. fine with that. So uh, we still have a break point in here that's going to allow us to. Bring some opinions back yeah. to it. So yeah, because I was coming into this, I was just like you, hesitant, but seeing the presentation and hearing yeah. that was. And I feel better about it. I think Lon totally gets what we <laughs> are hoping to see um, to make us feel more comfortable at the next stage. So with that, um, we have a uh, uh, Kim made a motion. Steve seconded resolution number two six nine four zero. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay. Um, next, we have a mayoral appointment, Judy Sillery. Um, at 1785 Grand Ave for the Historic Preservation Committee. Term expires January 1st of 2019. Um, is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, any discussion or comment? <laughs> Did I miss something? No. Okay. Um, I would say, and I said this to Judy before, I'm thrilled to see Judy. Um, be even more involved because she's a very great advocate for the city and so this is a perfect placement. Thank you for your um, willingness to step forward and serve on this committee. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> all right. Um, at this time, uh, citizens' presentations, comments, and or petitions, please come forward and state your name and address for the record and let us know what's on your mind. My name is Kent Bakken, um, 591 62nd Street um, with Integrity Companies. Um, so we started out a couple of years ago and we built a complex out on 62nd Street. And we put 47,000 square feet on that building and we got a TIF which was a lot different then. It was pretty much just kind of given a little bit more freely than it is now. So we ended up getting 310,000 to help offset um, costs over the first 10 years. So then we went through and we bought more ground that has been sitting there for over 10 years and out in the industrial area. So we proposed and we were built, we're building 33,800 square feet of more additional storage space. And we kind of, we went through the whole process of getting the TIF and you guys, are, we were granted 29,000 for the sprinkler systems. Um, the first project we got 310,000 and so we were extremely disappointed in what we actually got um, because of the massive commitment financially um, and the effort that we went through to build these buildings. It's a two year process from start to finish. And so we're still another year at least out, we're about halfway right now and so, you know, um, spending that kind of money, I just kind of felt like we were going to get TIFF, so we didn't question if we were going to get it or not. So, n and not that we're not grateful for the 29,000 that we, that they're proposing right now, but it is um, disheartening to see that such a low amount for such a high investment that we're pumping into the city, Marion. You want the commercial area to grow in Marion, that's why you guys do it and you have Nick with Medco and everything. But the ground is stagnant and sitting there for quite a while. I mean, I realize that there's some big companies that are coming out there and that's awesome. But just, um, we, we would like to have saw more um, TIF money on this project because um, we, we've, we're putting a lot of other things like that we don't have to. We don't have to put stone on the front of the building. We don't have to meet. They'll rent out with putting lower garage doors and doing these other things without the tip money. We could do that, but by, and we, and without additional tip money, we need, we may need to pull some of that stuff out. So what we were trying to do to make the project look nicer and neater and cleaner and, and build a, a respectable building in the city of Marion. And it's just like, we're, um, I just feel we should have got way more than that. So, and and to be truthful, other cities are offering more than that because um, we we have been working on another project in another city and they've already guaranteed us a five thousand seventy five percent tip. Um, and so I just um, you know once these things are built, you're guaranteed to get the tax money and it's forever as long as that building is there. And so if the city can help offset some of the headache and burden and of making sure that it's a profitable business and viable and successful long term it make uh, in my mind it makes sense but you know it kind of going through the process this time I was kind of frustrated that there wasn't guidelines it wasn't like oh once you spend this much money you get this once you do just like Todd in his papers it's kind of like I know every example is different but it just like you know 
just like Todd is putting tons of money into these businesses and buildings and stuff. And it would be nice to know, okay, at what point you actually get tip or how much tip. Because um, you, 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 in going into it, you're, you're putting so much money. I mean, I got millions in loans and, and, and cash into these buildings. I mean, between the two now, we'll have about five million into the in in loans and cash into these two built two facilities and I, it seems like we should be getting something more for this portion of it and so i just i wanted to ask for the reconsideration to have it reviewed again and to see if there was anything else we could get so, so um if anybody has anything to say i mean i i I would ask, Lon, this went through the committee, it came to us, we made a mm -hmm. vote. Um, I appreciate your commitment and your, your business to Marion. I, um, I don't know that we can ask for them to look at it again and see if they would make a recommendation. Okay. I, um, I think that, that we probably could ask them to look and see if there's something to bring forward, but you know, I, yeah. we lean on heavily, as you can see. This is sure. what they do all day. It's not what we do all day. We look at the synopsis of all of that and right. then judge it. But I, I appreciate your yeah. willingness to come forward and respectfully and state have, your okay. disagreement with our, our motion or our outcome. Yeah, if I would have known we weren't getting the TIF, I would have never done the project or I would have broke it into smaller portions. And it, um, But by doing it larger, you guys get more taxes up front Instead of it taking a four-year project, it's going to be done in one year, you know. And I and I I know you guys understand TIF, but you know it's it's money that's not received yet, but it helps. I mean, if you want the area to grow and you want things to happen, then you need to help help make them successful. I mean, it helps in every aspect, for them financing, to you know, um, just making sure it's viable and. Like I said when we, I was here last time, you know, sometimes you end up helping small businesses get in the door, get, get them to help them start building their business. And we do do a lot of concessions with small businesses and we help them move up and they, they start in a smaller space and we, we knock off 100 or $200 a month and get them in that space, help them start to grow and then move them to a new space as they can and help them grow. And and I know our business is different than a lot of other businesses with TIF and stuff, but it just, um, we've watched so many small businesses in the last two years grow in our buildings. And there are people that most likely are going to go to more, uh, bigger spaces because their business is growing and they're, they're wanting new, bigger space. So it, I think it, it all helps, you know, and, and that area on the other side of the interstate is just starting to grow with what Mike Esker and them guys are doing with the hotels and everything on the corner. But another night I was here at this city council meeting and he was excited that we're doing it, but you know, he's trying to get restaurants and stuff to go out there, but they need more people, they need more businesses. So by helping get people out there, like with what Nick and Medco and everyone are doing, it's, it's great. I just, I just kind of felt um, let down by the amount that we received. And so I, I think it's not just me, but it's, everyone that's once you're kind of stepping across a threshold of what you're spending is there not a consideration from from a tiff standpoint of of, of some kind of tax relief but isn't you know? the tiff consideration typically done at the initial stages before a project is being undertaken so that the business owner knows what the amount of that tiff may be and how they can justify it in the project so Typically, a TIF application doesn't occur in the middle of a project. It happens at the no. very initial stages. And, and I understand why you'd be raising the questions and making the comments you are if there's with the significant difference that you have between the two projects. Can you recall on, the, on his initial one why he got the amount he did on the initial project and what the yeah, rationale the, was for that versus uh, the difference in now? The first phase was done um, before the current economic development policy was enacted. 
and um, we changed the way that we did TIF considerably after the state took a big whack at it There's with some legal changes because they were very concerned that cities were abusing it and that it was not being used for its original intended purposes. So we did really tighten things down. Now when Kent uh, proposed his first project, the big hook on that one was that exactly what he talked about. Um, by using the tax increment financing incentive, he was going to be able to complete what could have been a five-year project in just a couple of years. So mm -hmm. there is an acceleration clause e even now in the economic development policy. But uh, when the first time that he applied, um, if the city at that time we worked with the lender. The lender came back to us and certified that yes, if you provide this, Kent's going to be able to complete the project much more quickly, which created more, as he's correct, more tax base more quickly on the tax rolls. So that was why the original one went through. Uh, since then, you know, in reaction to the legal changes and the increased scrutiny of TIF, we did change our process, and then we. Um, have just started running businesses through the financial analysis under the terms of the economic development policy. Brian, did you want to say something? I just wanted to <laughs> note again, uh, this is, these are non-agenda items. Uh, it's certainly one thing to hear the comment from the citizens and, and you know absorb it. Um, we just got to make sure we aren't actually really deliberating. I, I don't think any council members have crossed that line yet, but. Uh, as we get, <laughs> as we get, uh, if we get into more of a QA, and a yep. we're, we're drifting towards that territory. So I just want to caution everyone. Thank you. Got it. So um, I would <coughs> just say, and I agree with Lon, I was going to, I know the legislation has changed and tightened up because there has been abuse. Um, <coughs> I can't be the only one, that is my understanding, to ask, um, you know, Lon and the group to go back and... Um, take a look. I think it has to be multiple of us. It can't just be any one person, but um, we obviously hear you. We love that you're doing business here, yeah. um, and you know, perhaps they can take a, a look and see if there's something else in there that is worth bringing it back to us because something's changed. But all I can do at this point <coughs> is thank you for sharing your thoughts yeah. with us. Well, I was going to say on Steve, um, we, we started the process months ago. We, we actually just started a few weeks ago. The first time we did it, it was very, very simple. We filled out a packet of information and we submitted it. And I think within a few weeks, we had a we had mm -hmm. the result. So I had no idea that things had changed and to this extreme. So the question that I have for you before I go is just if you personally were investing 2.1 million dollars or 5 million dollars into a community, how much, you know, would would you want or would you would you um, you know, spending years of your life and, and investment into this project, how much TIF do you think is necessary? You know, it, I, I don't know. So anyway, so that's it. So no, I get it. And if I were you, I'd ask for as much as I can get. On the other side of it, there are hundreds of business owners, and if they all come and ask for X amount in TIF, it doesn't yeah. work that way. So there's definitely a balance, but I completely understand. Well, your and that's, that's why I, I think it'd be nice to see something that where there's thresholds. Once you spend this much, you spend 500,000 or a million or 2 million or 10 million, you know, and I know there's a lot of big companies being built out there and they're, you know, and they're, they're getting tipped because they're huge buildings and stuff. You know, it, it, they're getting discounted ground. They're getting tip money. They're getting concessions, cash, whatever it is from the city and, from the economic board and stuff. So it just, um, I guess it would be nice to see more of a, okay, this is Some this clarity. is where you come in at, yep. instead of going through the whole process and then getting 29,000. So okay, that, I think that's a very, very fair point. Yeah, so. all right. If it's, okay, if it's all right with the council, I think we'll put a, I'll put a discussion item on the next agenda okay. for the economic development policy so that we can just kind of walk through it so you can see right. the provisions in it. Um, we can give you what the blank application packet looks like so you can kind of see the process that everything walks through. I mean, it, it's a locally adopted policy. The city council, it's your policy. You own it and you can amend it. So, okay. um, but that way you'll be aware of what's in there and mm -hmm. how we run things through. Great idea. Okay. Great. Well, Thank thanks, you guys Ken. for your time. Appreciate yep. it. Anyone else want to come forward? Okay. Um, seeing none, council discussion time. We will start down here. Randy? 
Okay. Um, the only thing I have is this afternoon we attended the um, uh, the um, what do I want to call it? Press conference. Press conference. Thank you very much for the tactical um, emergency medical services uh, that Chief McHale and Chief Crable um, have uh, put together. It was uh, it was great. Before even coming into council, we've already heard people say they've seen it on the news uh, this evening. So. Uh, it'll be fun to take a look at tonight's 10 o'clock news to uh, see the coverage on that. So, again, very proud moment for um, uh, Marion um, to have this being implemented. Um, having us be proactive is better than reactive. We hope we never need that service. Um, but it's like a, uh, an onion, if you will. There's many layers to it. So I know there will be a lot of benefits come out of that um, just from our day-to-day uh, needs and services for our community, but uh, super exciting. Uh, I look and I hope that people will engage and read more about this, uh, follow this in the uh, media because it's uh, it's good things. Again, we're we're growing, we're growing very fast. We're seeing things on the national level that uh, are very saddening. Uh, we hope our community never has to uh, endure those experiences, but um, if we do, we know that uh, our backup is in, in place. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, again, very exciting. So, um, thank you. I'm going to jump in, even though usually um, the mayor goes last. But I'm going to put a little pressure on Paul to close us out already after 8:10. So all I want to say is, um, congrats to all the Marion Independent and Linmar High School grads. Um, great ceremonies. A lot of excellent, smart. Um, kids, I wish them the best, and I hope that they stay in the area and fill some jobs and open some businesses and um, continue to grow their families. It's a great place to go, and I hate when we lose all that talent. So um, hopefully a lot of them stick around. It's a great place to be and only getting better. Steve? Nothing to add. Okay, Paul, it's all you. <laughs> I, I do have a little business, strangely enough, to start with. And... As we go along in the future, I would like to have this council make some consideration to talk with Tom about two things. One is a sidewalk from Lyle Park to Linmar School District. Our South Side kids can't even go to Lyle Park. Plus, every morning you have kids walking to Linmar along 10th Street. We need a sidewalk on one side or the other of that street. We're building sidewalks. Let's consider one there. The other item doesn't involve sidewalks, and that is, Tom, we've waited long enough for Indian Creek Road to have a sidewalk. That Two years ago, we, we gave them more time, and the time is up as far as I'm concerned. What I wanted to talk about, though, is that this last weekend um, was not only a holiday, a Memorial Day, last couple, but the big thing that happens that weekend in my life for the last 60-some years is the Indy 500. I started listening to that as a youngster waxing a car on a Sunday afternoon when that race used to last six, seven hours instead of the three at last today. Well, I got thinking about it a little bit, and I can tell you I've been there 49 times out of 103 races. Paul has been there 49 times, started when he was in college. I would have been there, this would have been my 52nd, if medical would have let me go, which they don't anymore, so I'm not allowed to go, but my son did go, and I got thinking about it, and you know, that racetrack was actually built in 1907. It was rock, and uh, they had mixed in loose asphalt and loose concrete. They intended originally to make it five miles. They made it two and a half. And the first race they tried, they tore up almost every car they had. So in 1909, they asphalted all of the corners because that's where the pressure is with 30 degree banking is in the corners. That worked out pretty well. 
So they asphalted two years later the back back stretch, and three years later they asphalted everything on the main stretch except the center lane. They did this all over in in '09. In 63 days, they laid 3,200,000 bricks that weighed nine and a half pounds apiece to run that place. So, you know, it become that. Five years later, they've asphalted now the whole racetrack except the start-finish line. And when you hear it called the Brickyard, that is why, because it was a brick racetrack. Bricks made me wonder about Mary and Iowa. I always come back home. And I told you a couple of weeks ago I was talking about the Made Right building, which was made out of local bricks. There was a Cook manufacturing company in the early 1850s who made bricks right here in Mary and Iowa. He did it over by Indian Creek Road. And making bricks in those days is a whole different ball game than today. They had to go out by hand with shovels and wheelbarrows and clear all of the topsoils off of the land a few acres at a time so they could get to the clay. They'd clear the topsoils with shovels. They'd take the clay out in a wheelbarrow and take it back to Indian Creek, mix it with water until it was smooth, add sand, and then they had brick forms they'd put it in, which were made of wood. If they uh, had some of them that are six bricks, some of them that are two for somebody chem size to carry. And they put those that clay in there and packed it down and left it in the sun, sunshine, for about three weeks. They then took those bricks out of there and they took them over and they put them around a fire. And after three days, they turned them around, so they baked on both sides. But the neat thing about that was it happened right here in Marion, Iowa. And many of the buildings, including one I'm pretty in love with at 610 10th Street, were made out of the bricks from the Cook Brick Factory right here in Marion. And that's all I have, Mayor. Do you know when it, do you know when it shut down? Pardon me? Do you know how long it was a, in operation, the Cook Brick Company? Oh, the Brick Company? It, it disappeared in 1912 because there were other bricks coming in. You know, we were lumber country. We did all these frame houses. And that's why our brick houses of that era are so cherished because, you know, like the History Center. The History Center is from, made from bricks from the Cook Brick Factory. And those buildings, and we have one across from the library that I hope we're able to save, is a brick building that came from that brick factory. And uh, so, you know, it didn't last a long time. The bricks, incidentally, in 1888 in the depot came in here by train from Pennsylvania. When we cleaned over 130,000 bricks, we found one brick with a brick mark on it with that company's name on it. We still have that brick. So. Okay, with that, a uh, motion to adjourn to closed session regarding land acquisition as permitted under Section 21.51J of the Code of Iowa. Second. Okay, motion and second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Sorry, we need the attorney's roll opinion call. and a roll call oh, for that. Please, Mr. Tang. My moment to shine. <laughs> 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 Your Honor, I have reviewed the subject matter, and it is my legal opinion that pursuant to Iowa Code Section 21.5 sub 1 sub J that it is appropriate uh, material to review in closed session, and I recommend that the council adjourn to closed session to discuss it. Thank you, and thank you both. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Roll oh, roll call. roll call. Okay. Roll call vote. Mr. Draper. Yes. Ms. Etzel. Yes. Mr. Jensen. Yes. Ms. Gedalia. Yes. Mr. Brandt. Yes. Mr. Sternin. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.